It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley are here. Of course, there's an update on uh, Windows 10. We'll talk a little bit about Paul and Mary Jo's reaction to Mike, to Apple's announcements uh, on Monday. And uh, there's a whole lot more. It's going to be a great show, I promise you. Windows Weekly, next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 417, recorded June 10th, 2015. St. Butthoff's School for Girls. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Audible.com to download a free audiobook of your choice. Go to audible.com slash windows and buy Prosper. Prosper is a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace that connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 Visa gift card when you get a loan. And buy Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you all the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover uh, all the Microsoft news with two of the best Microsoft journalists in the bids. Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com. Great to see you. A good day. I would say good morning, but it's it's afternoon for you. Mary Jo has new glasses. Mary Jo has new glasses. <laughs> They're but very even bigger than my other glasses. No, I like them. Better. They're like giant cat eyes. <laughs> they are. They're cool. Very hip. Very with it. Paul Thorat is here to tease Mary Jo. He's, <laughs> he's with Thorat.com. Yeah. And uh, together, the two of them are the dynamic duo of Windows coverage. Drink, Leo. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! How are you doing? How you were getting? July 20, uh, 29th. We're getting very, getting we're getting very close, isn't it? And it feels like it's so done. <laughs> uh, uh, well, we'll get to that. Thank you. Hi, hi, hi. He says, having rebooted his computer this morning uh, since nothing was working. Yeah. Oh, really? It's okay. Oh, it's still oh, I, a beta. You know what? I do that with every ver every operating system, from time to time. Actually, I was watching your Twitter feed with with great gusto and glee on Monday because you're you're <laughs> side tweeting the Apple event. And I promised as, you. As soon as they showed snap uh, snaps <laughs> snap what is it snap screen snap windows. Well, they call it split view. But split view. I said we call it snap from Windows 8, Leo. <laughs> I said, oh, I mean, but really, uh, as Andy Anako pointed out, and I agree, it's wonderful when you get cross pollinization. It's just there's a certain irony because Apple's the company always complaining. Everybody's copying. I, you know and, what? <laughs> At least I, I'll just say this. I mean, Apple never made fun of Windows 8, so you know why would we uh, return the favor? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Really? Uh, uh, what was the phrase uh, about? It was like combining uh, two turkeys doesn't make an eagle, or, oh God. or I believe there was a commentary that has something to do with a refrigerator and a microwave oven. Oh Lord, if I'm not mistaken. Ironically, were, Apple's doing that ex talk. exact thing, which is the kind of the the mixing of the iPad yeah. and the desktop. Um, same things happening. You know what they never explained, by the way, uh, was that iOS apps to date have supported uh, some form, obviously supported, I'm not a programmer, but they support some form of layout reflow because they're a different size and resolution and DPI devices and everything. But um, I'm wondering if this uh, type of capability isn't going to require a further enhancement of those capabilities and maybe new apps because I, I, I mean, do we, we've never been able to arbitrarily resize an iOS app in real time. No, in so, fact, that was one thing. How do we know how that reacts? Android does have that reflow because there's so many Android screens because mm -hmm. Apple was able to constrain the various resolutions, not as well yeah, as not anymore. Used to. I mean, not anymore. Now it could be arbitrary, right? Because you just like Snap, you can slide that. Well, listen, I can just speaking from experience as a user for several years now, I can say this is going to go great. 
Well, so you know, you know, enjoy a, that. You're not going to have any problems at all. There's an analog uh, in the web world. Mobile, it's called mobile design or responsive design. Responsive mobile design, response design. Yes. And, sure. and that's kind of, I guess, the, the feeling probably among uh, uh, folks who do uh, desktop OSs as well. We just, we're just going to have to do that in, on the desktop as well. We've been doing it in Windows for years and years. Yeah, well, actually, desktop's not the problem. It's, ta it's tablet. It's, it's, it's apps the, like the Metro apps that expected to be the full universal screen. apps. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one thing. I like. Well, what do they call it? it? Actually, slide Leo, over. Actually, slide fair, over. Leo. You tweeted right after. Um, yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I, we've been dealing with this on the desktop as well. Uh, you can arbitrarily oh, resize yeah. Word well, or Excel. I mean, so, so there is some element. I am the only person, uh, I think, in the world now, old enough to remember <laughs> that when windowing operating systems were first contemplated, there was a yes. deep and bitter divide between people who said the windows should be overlapping and windows should be tiled. There was and, also a deep overlap between people who thought that it would even be possible to redraw windows right. at a speed that would you make sense well, as you moved them over other you windows. Couldn't. So. But so the tiling advocates lost. Uh, but you may remember even Windows 1 was mm -hmm. tiled. Sure, too, um, as, as well. They didn't have overlapping windows. Partly that was probably a hardware limitation, you know, because it probably is more computationally intensive. Resource intensive, yeah. yeah. But uh, ultimately, overlapping windows won the day, and that's all the windows we had until now. And then we're going back to tiled. <laughs> to, to be fair, though, I mean, I, 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 right, I, I, I know world. some people will try to make that sound ironic or something, but, you know, I think it's fair to say that these overlapping windows actually do confuse a lot of people. That yeah. things get hidden that we yeah. don't realize or remember that are there. Um, I find it odd on the Mac, for example, that you can close the floating window but the app remains running you can still right. see it up in the title bar and i think a lot of people don't understand what's going on there and so i don't know you know one of the things I, I thought was kind of interesting about windows 8 when it first came out and i really tried to adapt to this was this notion of snap which at the time was very limited um you know would that make sense in, in some way Could, would that be enough you know in my own style of working would i be able to say have a, like a web browser open on one side and a you know a word document on the other and, and kind of just just work side by side and uh, the answer is no. That's it's a really dumb way of doing things. But I think for some people, actually, I think for a lot of people, that may be enough. You know, that when you go from say like a single screen experience like you have on an iPad to just just being able to split it, I think is a big Man, deal. I hated Snap. Do you remember? I was like railing mm -hmm. on Snap. Well, the first version was dumb. It was you, hard, right? but you didn't have to snap. use it, right? Nothing made you snap. No. No, no but, well, actually, snap. it did make her snap. Listen. Snap she did. <laughs> I, think, I think we had Dr. Pizza on the show, and he's like, Snap is the best thing in Windows 8. And I'm yeah. like, how do you even get it to work? Yeah. Like, that's why I'm so excited about Snap Assist. With Windows 10, I'm like, oh, finally, they're going to help people figure out how well, to snap. Well, I, I mean, I, actually, right. So, actually, I agree that Snap Assist is kind of a neat thing. I, I think in 8.1, when they added the ability to arbitrarily size the snap sides, yeah, right? That helped a and lot. And just 50-50 just yeah. view, I think, would have even have been enough um, yeah. is a big deal. So what, what I'm hearing is that this idea of uh, tiled windows, and uh, on the iPad, there's just uh, two of them, but uh, mm -hmm. can you yeah. do more than two on uh, Windows 8? Oh, yeah. You can do a variety. Three, four. It, it depends on your screen resolution, orientation. Okay. So uh, I'm hearing, and I think this is true, that it, people like it because you don't have obscured windows. You don't have – the behavior is more oh, predictable. Leo, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, when I say that, that's Windows 8, right? 8.1. Eight, actually, in Windows 8. 10, we're back to floating windows. So right. you could actually stack well, that, them. And, that's know, where I was going. We could, we, could, we could put them in grids that's and where I was going. Is, cascade them. We're is, back. Is, We've come full circle. <laughs> Um, so I eagerly await, you know, iOS 11 when they go back to this one app. <laughs> on, on the one yeah. hand, uh, I, I, I welcome the fact that uh, companies are willing to, tr to listen to your users and try to respond to usability issues. And there is a usability issue with, with Snap and I'm sure with, micro with Apple's solution in that it's hard to figure out how to get there. Yep. But, uh, <laughs> but when you get there, it does help people because they see everything that's going on on the screen. There's no hidden parts. And then... Just kind of arbitrary. I think the worst thing you could do is just kind of arbitrarily go back, and and <laughs> and so on the one hand, I want to. I think it's great that they listen, but on the other hand, make up your freaking mind. <laughs> well, okay. So I, I'm just I'm projecting a little bit, but I think the market made up its mind. Okay. I think Mar Microsoft. I think Mary Jo. I think would agree. With, Microsoft was intending to go down this kind of modern route, and that maybe Windows management would get a little more 
uh, complicated or, or full featured or whatever, but that it would be within that metro environment. Right. We've gone back to the desktop is what's happened. Yep. And so there, there's some nicety that uh, there's just built in power there, which is great. But uh, what she was alluding to earlier with Snap Assist, you know, how do you take this desktop system, which is inherently complex, but retain some of the simplicity that existed in Metro? And so you allow snapping, but you can enhance it with uh, Snap Assist, where you can choose from a grid of floating windows which other app or window you want to snap. And that actually is a really nice feature. It is. It's You know, it's very interesting. I, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but Microsoft did a blog post on June 4th, so before WWDC. And the post was all about the different ways you're going to be able to snap in Windows 10. And when, when Apple yeah. announced this on Monday, I was thinking, they knew this was coming, right? Yeah, because yeah, this yeah. whole blog post is about... We have these new tools coming like Snap Assist and Corner Snap. And they explained all the different new ways you're going to be able to do snapping that are beyond what you got as a basic kind of snapping yeah. with Windows 8. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited about this because I remember, I still remember the first time I tried snapping in Windows 8, I was like, wait, how do you do this? It's yeah. so weird. Yeah. Right? And where's well, it was, I want to remember it was broken. Snap. So <laughs> it, it was literally yeah. hard coded to a single pixel width, 320 pixels, I right. think. And your app had to explicitly support it. You could snap the desktop, but it was stupid. I mean, you know, there was nothing to do there. And um, it would just, you know, it just didn't make sense. I, at the time, I think they were positioning it like, well, maybe you have like a weather app over on the side, like something you might have done with the sidebar before. Um, or maybe you're referencing like a stock ticker or, you know, something like that. But right. in 8.1, of course, it became useful. You know, now it actually makes sense. And now they're getting rid of it. <laughs> so, well, now they're changing. They're going. To, they're going they're back changing. to desktop snap, which, by the way, they had in Windows Seven, right. uh, and they're enhancing it further with ideas that they got from eight and eight one. They would probably argue, well, you don't have to use any of this. We're just adding features to give mm -hmm. people some flexibility in the ways they can work. Yep, um, and that's. I mean, that's Windows in a nutshell, right there, yeah, right? I yeah, mean, there are a million ways to do right, things, and right. On my, I can tell you, on my Windows 8.1 machine, I snap on that machine maybe 10% uh, of the time. I hate snap. I still hate it. And I, I uh, just <laughs> am so used to using Windows. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just before, uh, so one of the things I, w when we do the podcast, I actually, this is the only time I've really used snap in the real world because, you know, it's a big screen. You don't, you're not going to have yeah. two big windows right. on the screen. But um, I snap the notes to the side of the screen. And in one note, you can actually hit F11 and have kind of a full, you know, no, no uh, Chrome, you know, like no uh, yeah. ribbon and so forth. But, you know, and I'm, I'm running Windows 10 today. And so when I snap that, of course, I got that snap assist feature that Mary Jo was talking about. And I don't want that personally. I recognize that this is something that normal people would even need, you know, yeah. but uh, even if they don't need it, it's a great thing to have. But for me, it's annoying and it short circuits like the keyboard shortcut thing. So when it came up, I kept trying to put it into full, uh, one note into full screen <laughs> mode, but it wouldn't do it because it was waiting for me to uh, select another app. And so as we were getting ready for the off? show, I literally struggled with this for about two minutes. No. Can't you shut off Snap Assist, though? I thought that was something you could do. No. Yeah, you probably can. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. sure you could do that. Yeah. It's <laughs> Windows. Of course you can. Yeah, you can do anything. Yeah. It's Windows. Is there anything well, you can't do? <laughs> yes, Sir Mary Jo, you can. You can, you, can. Allow, you can disallow the system to suggest companion Windows when using Snap. Choices. How about that? Nice. I think, though, that uh, uh, I, 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 for one, if anybody uses an iPad, will welcome this kind of s new snappish. <laughs> well, not anyone, because it only works on one iPad. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's clearly designed yeah. for the larger uh, iPads yes. to come. Maybe, uh, yeah, I was going to say, th I think I did say on Twitter, you know, this would be an interesting feature for, say, a, I don't know, 12.9 inch right. uh, widescreen. Yeah. Uh, pro <laughs> and remote. remember, it's not going to be available. It's not coming out until then. It's not coming out until right. the fall. So, that's right. I, I think it's pretty reasonable to say this is that's what this is for. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you you but said what something did, what about. What do you guys think of snap ahead. snap on on OS X X? I always still say Ten. that. Ten. <laughs> it's okay, you're a Windows person. You don't have to say hand. it right. Yeah, I think I, I believe. I, oh no, I said it about Tim Cook, but I was actually thinking it about you, Leo. <laughs> What's that? When they announced the new version of OS X, I I hoped and prayed that you issued an edict. That from now on, everyone at Twit must refer to you <laughs> as El Capitan. El Capitan. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I am El Capitan. <laughs> but but on, so on that version, when you snap, because you can snap on that too, right? 
Um, but only in full screen mode. You can do it with a mouse, yeah? Yeah, because there's no touch. Uh, right. Well, I, it was a gesture, wasn't it? It was a trackpad gesture, I would imagine. Oh, maybe. Oh, okay. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Because have I you think. ever tried snapping with a mouse? No. Snapping with a it's mouse. Not, well, I must say I have not. <laughs> It requires a dexterity that does not exist. Yes, it, does. it was like in, in Windows 8 and 8.1, there's a um, there's a gesture. Oh, actually, this isn't a mouse gesture. I'm sorry. I'm kind of screwing this it up. It feels like a, that's an ad. That they could do an ad. Have you snapped? Yeah. Have you done it with well, a You mouse? know, when you swipe in from the side of the screen in Windows 8, you get, uh, it's just sort of an app navigation thing. You can go from app to app. Yeah. But if you do this really curious gesture, you kind of, you start that process, but then you stop. And then you go down or up a little bit, and then you get switcher. And it's the most impossible. Yeah. You have to have trained for years as a ninja to get this thing right. Yeah. I don't know what they were thinking, but yeah. um, <laughs> I would imagine using Snap with a mouse would be a similarly difficult task. Yes. Right. I've tried to do it before because I always plug a mouse into my Windows 8 laptop, as yeah. you've seen me. And mm -hmm. it's challenging. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. So I, I was kind of intrigued by that feature. But, you know, when I, I wasn't watching the Apple keynote because I don't care about Apple at all. But um, I was watching Paul's tweets because they were entertaining. Um, <laughs> they were. It was quite fun. <laughs> it was. But, uh, but I'll say everybody was like, oh, yeah. And, and I think Paul even said this. I hope, I hope it works out for Apple as well as it did for Microsoft, <laughs> meaning Windows 8, right? Oh, sure. But, you know, what I, what I kept thinking about was... The thing Apple isn't doing here, they didn't introduce charms at the same time as they introduced Snap. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm not I'm and not kidding Switcher about this. And, no, yeah, Too right, many yeah. things going on at once when Windows 8 came out, right? Like if it had only been Snap, I think I, I, more people would have well, been, okay, it's a little different. I can pretty much char promise you, despite Paul's request, charms are not coming to OS 10. Good. I hope they never come because that was like the worst I, thing I, ever. I, I pretty know much one of those Windows 7 that. parties if they did charms in uh, OS or sure. iOS. I bet that's not happening. So great. That's one feature I'm very happy to see go away. And I know people who use Windows 8 on tablets still love the charms. But I'm I'm liking that Microsoft's just making this built-in contracts uh, something that you'll take advantage of as a developer now. And you won't have to figure out, oh, yeah, wait, I can slide in from the right because that's a whole other thing I have to learn now. You know, Although now you're going to unlearn it. <laughs> the subject of charms. I, I just, <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, uh, I love Windows and I, I recommend Windows. Like uh, I, I like Windows. I use it and all that stuff. And um, <laughs> there have been ups and downs over the years. I mean, I'm just trying to kind of set the stage here for this. But, you know, like things like Windows Vista or Windows Me that people consider to be these huge disasters, to me, were not necessarily a big soul searching moments. Um, charms yeah. in Windows 8 was what did it for me. And I, I, I will never, I'm not going to say who this was. I'm not trying to make fun of anybody, but. I will never forget the moment where after they announced this UI and I went and spoke with somebody from Microsoft and said, okay, I need terminology. I need to understand what this stuff is. So you've got this kind of toolbar thing that comes in from the side. And he says, charms. And I said, okay, charms. So I said, charms is a toolbar. And he said, no, char charms are just charms. <laughs> yeah, okay. But there are, there are icons or buttons or, and he said, no, they're just charms. And I said, listen, you need a way nope. of describing nope. this mm -mm. that makes sense it's generally. Mm -hmm. And he says, yeah, they're just charms. We talked about that one. That and that, I swear to God, was my lowest <laughs> moment ever covering Windows was charms. Paul, I walked away you, you'll from understand that thinking, when you're older, Paul. No, these people don't know what they're doing. That's what I thought ooh, as I walked away. From this. And it was the only time you, you can make excuses for things like Windows Vista, which, you know, was the result of a bunch of events that happened before and they had to kind of get the thing out and they kind of fixed it over time and whatever. And this, but this was the one where I was like, nope, they, no, <laughs> you know, no, they don't, they yeah. don't know what they're doing. And that's I didn't, scary. Yeah. I didn't love the name, but more, I didn't love trying to train myself suddenly to start swiping in sometimes from the left and the top and the bottom. And I was like, where are the commands? Yeah. I can't even find them. Give me the hamburger people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, the one thing they got right is they did have keyboard commands for everything. Yeah. I like that they started right. using the Windows key for keyboard shortcuts because yes. now we all yeah. have those keys on our keyboards. Uh, and they're doing more of that in Windows 10. Yes. I'm just very, man, uh, I, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm proud to announce that the new Twit website is going to feature charms. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> it, it, by the way, it's implemented as a Java widget. <laughs> so. No, we thought Flash would be more useful. Flash or ActiveX. <laughs> Active it's an ActiveX control. <laughs> and Pappy, that'll way. live forever, right? No, no problem there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in a way, we so do kind of have charms. pure BB script. We slide uh, stuff in off on the left, but <laughs> but we use a hamburger button to do it. So I think that's okay. Nice. I think it's okay. Okay. That's all right. That was what was, <laughs> frankly, that was what was missing, right? Was some obvious Amber way to invoke the charms. Right. Yeah. Right. UI by mistake. Yeah. Oh, you look. Know, and that was something happened. Well, that? That, I've said this before. I mean, that was always the problem with Windows yeah. 8. Yeah. You know, you would see something. You wouldn't maybe know how you, you got switch there. It came up. You did that screwy thing I was talking yeah. about. Or maybe you did the charms thing. And maybe you got a, a like an app bar to pop up in an app. And you have no idea how you did it. Right. And there's no way, you, so you, there's no way to, Repeat it. You, you just don't know what happened. I see you're looking to create the charms. May I help? <laughs> <laughs> Bring Clippy. back Clippy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You needed something. You needed something to give people more of a clue. That, and, you know, again, this is, goes back to why I think Apple might yes. actually pull this off where Microsoft didn't. App, uh, Microsoft tried to change too many things. Right. Then they def I think you're refused right. to give you a clue about right. how you were supposed to use the operating system. I mean, because uh, they said, remember, they said... The more you do it, you're going to love it, and you're going to just figure it out. <laughs> and you know what? I can tell you, if you tell a business user that, who mm -mm. you come in and see your desktop is totally mm -mm. different, and there's no training mm -mm. materials, and there's no video to watch, you're kind of lost. I, and by the way, I think that's why Windows 10 is so important. I think it's, uh, you know, uh, you can look at it cynically like this is some giant step back or something. But, I mean, honestly, they've advanced the important and positive parts of the Windows 8 platform through Universal Apps yes, primarily, yes. which I think is huge. Yes. And they brought back all of that stuff that made Windows just so Windows. perfect for mm -hmm. you know productivity tasks over the years. I yeah. mean, tablets, yeah, different story. And uh, phone, you know, uh, we'll see. Although, I, you know, knowing how Windows Phone has gone over the years from sort of a user experience standpoint, it's not hard to imagine Windows 10 working well on a phone. It's just mm -hmm. that the current build we have which is very out of date, is not very good. But I, I, I think I can conceptualize it at least, right? I'm, not, I'm nervous about yeah, the timing. I'm not nervous about the end product. Yeah, where is our, what, what is, where is the phone where build? Where is that phone build? <laughs> it's going to be I lots know. more than a few weeks after July 29th, it, it's, let's face it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. We haven't gotten a phone build in quite a while. Yeah. No, a month. In fact, this during this show would be an ideal time for them to drop a phone build. <laughs> Gabe, are you listening? <laughs> right now. <laughs> sure. The red button. Um, yeah. Rod looks too confident. Let's release something. <laughs> I, I, well, I, think, I don't want to spend too much time talking. I part of the reason is... No, I was going to say part of the reason we haven't had it is, isn't it one team building Windows 10? Oh, they're busy. They're kind of busy. Okay, but come on. <laughs> I mean, come on. I, yes, but... <laughs> there I, are 5,000 of them, but they're busy. Right. I was going to say, it's a huge <laughs> team. And it is. if you can't handle the delivery of these things simultaneously, why are you delivering them simultaneously? You know, uh -huh. I mean, uh, why not just stage them, you know, announce that in advance? I mean, they, they it's like one window, it's, eh, we'll release them at different times. Oh, I do want to talk about Apple Watch OS stuff. For really? Me. Mary Jo, you surprised me. Yes. Well, the reason I do is because as I was watching people's tweets about this, there's two things. I There was something I was trying to prove this week that I never could. Can we prove in any way that at the Watch OS is based on iOS? Oh, yeah. Now and they're saying it's Watch OS, not exactly. anything else. Yeah. Right. So that's well. interesting. That makes me think it's more like what's inside Microsoft Band firmware, right? Windows yeah. is not inside Microsoft Band. I, I was always curious if iOS was inside the Apple Watch. I can give you a little history on that because when, I don't know if you remember, but when uh, the iPhone was announced, Steve Jobs said it was running OS X. Oh, he did? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and well, it I mean, is <laughs> in the sense that it's the same kernel. It's a mock kernel. Yep. Yeah. Um, and there are some of the some some of the layers are the same, but but, you know, Apple quickly moved away from that to iOS. Right. Even yeah. though you could make the claim that it's, you know, it's based on yeah. OS X. By the way, uh, when they had that screen up, and it was right at the beginning of the event, it said OS X, iOS, watch OS. I tweeted something to the effect of... New OS. If one of their competitors announced this little thing, right, he would be going fragmentation, fragmentation, right. fragmentation. <laughs> right? Yeah. But because it's Apple, yeah, this is great. 
You know, we have three mm -hmm. different operating systems. They were making fun of Microsoft for having right. too many operating yeah. systems. Right. Right. Uh, Microsoft is busy consolidating. Apple is busy regurgitating. Yeah, but but even, you know, even Google has a couple of different operating systems. Yep. Um, yeah. and, and by the way, I also find that to be very curious. I, yeah. I, it seems to me that Android would be a fine base on which to uh, have a, a laptop type OS. Yeah, person. yeah, I agree. And well, we, we have said, we've said ourselves that we thought maybe Microsoft should have done a tablet OS that was different from the desktop OS. We've said that on the show. I guess I my, still, my, my point is yeah. that there, I don't mm -hmm. know what the technical merits of calling it a different name are. It's not about yeah. the technical. It's no. about the marketing. Yeah, it's right. a it's a marketing distinction. Um, well, and in uh, fact, technically, we don't know, but, but technically, they might be. They are. We know very similar, because uh, yeah. when you write, for instance, an iOS uh, app right now, an iPhone app, you can have watch capabilities migrate over to the watch as part of that app. It's not a separate app. Well, I think I think the watch today works like a browser extension, where iOS is the browser, your right. iPhone is the browser, and. It's just it's like a remote display almost, and I think the deal behind Watch OS is that uh, not so much that the OS has, has changed on the watch, although I think it's been enhanced, but rather that developers can now write apps that will run directly on the watch without a phone, that can take advantage of watch features, software features like glances and um, what do they call them complexities, as well as hardware features like the crown and the other button, whatever. Right. And it really, they really are complex. And, by the way. you know, it's, <laughs> so, know. <laughs> it's worth saying that Microsoft is going that way with the band. Right right now, inside of the band, there's firmware that is not Windows. I think when Band 2.0 comes out, it still will not be Windows. But someday down the road, they are going to use that same Windows core as Windows 10 uses. Or at least a shrunken version. I'm curious version. that that wasn't part of the announcement. It might have just been because... <laughs> It wouldn't be ready within this kind of first year of Windows 10. It's not. But no. they have an IoT platform based on Windows 10. How do right. they not have a wearable platform based on Windows 10? Yeah, so far they do not. Um, it's, it's, it's curious. Yeah, it is curious. And, you know, there there have been hints it's coming and that's the plan. Um, but I don't know when it's the plan. I don't think it's any time soon. I definitely don't think it's this year for the band that it'll be Windows yeah. 10. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard anything about it. No. <clears throat> But still, kind of interesting to compare those two things. What else did Apple do that we can rip on, Leo? Oh, I can give you lots. <laughs> <laughs> the My favorite comment about the show was uh, two and a half hour keynote at a developer show. Not a single line of code, yeah. not a single peek at a developer environment. You know? well, we talk, By I the talked, way, they did a nice little bit on Apple Music. <laughs> I'll t I, we talked a little bit about that on uh, uh, MacBreak Weekly yesterday. It's a challenge because Apple only really does three events a year. They would do one developer event and two product events. They can do special events. events. They could do you know, more, they, but they don't. And I, honestly, a, a special event that had a little music, a hint about music, would have generated just as much as ex excitement. Uh, yeah, actually, they could have had a special know, event. In the press. But they like to constrain yeah. those. I think, really, Apple's come to see the keynote at WWDC as prime, is with the developer audience, but primarily it's a public, anything Apple does publicly, it becomes a public spectacle. You know, remember WWDC is much, much more than that keynote. It's right. uh, it's a bunch oh, of, yeah, yeah. it's like Build, it's a bunch of uh, breakouts. Uh, but to the sessions. world at large, it is that keynote and, and whatever happens from that day on, nobody, we've all stopped paying attention. Yeah, but that but that's right. So the world at large, that's what they saw. And it was a lot, to me, it felt like they were throwing a lot of stuff against the wall. And it was, it was yeah. just, it's kind of random. Like, oh, we have a new news app. We're going to update the notes app. Jeez. And oh, by the way, it's uh, we're going to put apps. I, I, I don't want to get too far into the app stuff. But I, I looked when he said when he showed the notes thing, I was like, you got to This is so predatory, you know. And I looked at the notes app as it exists now in iOS because I'm like most people. I hide it away in a folder and never look right. at it again. And it is so bare bones. It makes Notepad look like a, right. uh, a Microsoft Office application. Like it's, it's <laughs> ridiculous. Wow. Bare bones. <laughs> it's also for and, Apple to spend time on that. It's like Microsoft saying, Let, let's take a look at the new Minesweeper. We're very excited. Yeah. Well, uh, to take time out of a keynote. Uh, <laughs> right. Yes. Is that what you mean? Because yes. I, I found it incredible that they devoted time to that app. Like, we're not going to give you an update on how our businesses are doing. But by the way, we have a new notes. But app. they do I that mean, all the time. I mean, I don't know if you remember. I brought this up yesterday. They spent a long time on a couple of years ago on an app called um, Cards. It was about greeting cards, which they've since oh, killed. Yeah. I mean, it was it went down without a trace. 
Sure. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, these are just, I think they're aberrations along the road. I don't really understand it. We, there's some speculation that much of the keynote was to be de de uh, devoted to a new Apple TV. Mm -hmm. And that they, mm -hmm. they suddenly, uh, you know, in the last week or so said, right. no, we're not ready. And yanked it out. So that may be what happened, too. That those things. Well, al allow me to, to leave the Apple discussion with a compliment for Apple, because this is a sore spot for me on the Microsoft side, which is music. And um, uh, before Apple even introduced this service, you know, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, whatever, we do some comparative article about various services that are out in the world for streaming music, buying music, whatever it is. Microsoft doesn't is never mentioned, ever, not once. Never, 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 never. And uh, on the flip side, I don't feel like Microsoft does anything to promote what they're doing. And I sort of feel like if, you know, if your heart isn't in this, you should just give it up. I mean, I don't understand why you have to have a music service. There are plenty of them. It doesn't have to be built into Windows. Um, as however you feel about Apple, uh, I guess the one thing I would say about them is they're serious about music, right? This is not going to change their financial fortunes in any way, shape, or form. They're still doing it. Like, they really care about music. They clearly care about music. And I may have, you know, uh, complaints or whatever about various aspects of the service and all that stuff. But ultimately, I mean, they're doing this thing. They're really going for it. And they're going for it in a way that Microsoft just doesn't, they don't seem to, you know, look what we made it, we updated an app, you know. They're, just, they're, they're never, they're never going to do it. Apple, Apple does communicate a little bit better with uh it's, don't you think yeah. than Microsoft? I mean, they, they a little bit. Yeah, they they I think at least attempt to explain. <laughs> and that was my one complaint about uh, Monday is that there wasn't a coherent story to what they were up to. I didn't feel like uh, where they've done in the past. Which, which one was this? Uh, in in general, like in the past. But no, I mean, what was it? Apple? You're talking about? Or yeah, Microsoft? Apple. Apple. In the past, Apple's been very good. In fact, this is one of their secret sauces. I think communicating a storyline behind what they're up to. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I found the weirdest thing they did was, you know, uh, we usually do a little update on the business. Everything's great. Ha, 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 clap, yeah. clap, clap. And then they kind of went on. And I was like, you know, I really, I, 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 I've always sort of hated the way they contort the figures to make everything look so positive. But on the other hand, it provided context for the advances that they're now right. announcing. Whereas this time it was just like, we're doing great. It doesn't matter what we do. Here's some stuff. <laughs> Well, Paul, <laughs> you know, it is kind of true that they are the most successful company in the history of the world. <laughs> it's also really true that fifty percent. To... No, but they they really are a single product company now. You know, the the iPad was going to be the next big thing, and until it's six straight right. quarters of falling sales, right. you know, the, I, we can all agree that Apple Watch is not going to be the next big thing. Apple Music is not going to be the next big thing. They don't have a next iPhone. Well, they're fact, hoping they, it's the next do, big uh, thing, but it isn't going to be. I completely agree with you. It's the iPhone is the next iPhone. It's, it's what the weirdness of what's happened right. with Apple. So, I mean, I, I hear and the, you. And I think but the I mean, watch isn't either. I think the watch, maybe they had hopes for it. Um, it's not. I'm start, I'm, and I know people hate it when I say this, but I'm of the opinion that all watches now are, are basically dopey. There's not really, <laughs> there's not well, a compelling I mean, argument so, for wearing one of these things, really. I mean, there's I like, some features. I like the notion of a fitness band. Yeah. And I, Microsoft band, mm. the Fitbit, whatever. I think these, mm. for people who want this kind of oversight, those are nice. A, a watch can provide that and does. You know, the Apple Watch right. does that. The other stuff about an Apple Watch and animated Mickey Mouse thing, the apps you can't remove from that home screen, which drives me insane. Yeah. The crazy user interface, the reliance on the iPhone. I mean, all the weirdness of Apple Watch. I, I You know... It, because we're Apple is the only reason. <laughs> well, but Android Wear is very similar in many ways. And I think uh, the real issue is it's a very small thing that yeah. that can't do all the things you're trying to make it do very easily. It's, you talk about the charms bar being confusing. <laughs> it's like having a charm <laughs> on your to, wrist. Trying to figure out. I mean, sure. it, 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 uh, so, but any... You know what would be so, a great wearable platform, by the way? What? Uh, the live tiles from Windows, just as a as a... As the face of a watch. I think they're well. That's kind of what Android Wear does. They're ca they're uh, cards. The cards, yeah. Uh, and I think that is a, probably a better UI, although it's still I not like a Android. great UI. But I, I find that to be slightly more logical than the Apple yeah. one. I think Web OS uh, cards might have worked, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Uh, so a Apple Music, there's a kind of a, a Me Too thing at this point. I don't. I think sure. they don't have anything unique uh, there. Um, they, well, the other except, thing that they, they, except they have a built-in user base, right? I mean, th now they're providing these people with a natural upgrade. Well, I, this will I, be interesting. There's some value to that. I, yeah. I, I get it. I, they tend to move slowly into these kinds of things. Uh, it's a little too Spotify-like. The family plan is reasonable. Yeah. So I, read, I read an article. I think it was in, dancing. I, think I read one. I read, 
I read an article, I can't, I can't remember where, maybe Wired, that said, this is disruptive. They, they, <laughs> this, is, this is why Apple Music is disruptive. And I thought, what, is, what could possibly be considered disruptive about Apple Music? And what it came down to was the family plan, which, by the way, every single other company is going to do immediately. So, so there, okay, yeah, that was some Microsoft, by the way. Except Microsoft. I, know, I was going to say, what about Microsoft? Well, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know about Microsoft. Uh, the other thing that they did that copied Microsoft, and it's very interesting. Apple for a long time uh, refused to go the direct X route. They refused to say we're going to have proprietary extensions for gamers that let you program to the metal. Instead, you have to use OpenGL, mm -hmm. which I praised because that's an open standard. Sure. And uh, but Apple never supported it very well. OpenGL drivers on Macintosh were uh, execrable, horrible. You know what, Windows so, did but, a much better job, uh, ironically. But what's the end game there? Is there a big market for Mac-based gamers? No, really? the end game is uh, Photoshop, uh, Illustrator. Okay, okay. And That's very, very important to those guys. And Apple had gotcha. been pushing these open standards, OpenGL and OpenCL, on these guys. But the problem was a render on Macintosh of the same thing took five times longer because they had crap open GL drivers. I don't, I don't I don't see that ever demonstrated in an Apple keynote. Are you sure that's accurate? <laughs> <laughs> no, they never mentioned Weird. that. Uh, Bill Schiller enough. gets up and does the side by side. I, mean, I've, I verified it very simply by putting a high end new video card in my old Mac Pro and attempt to improve it and was shocked that the benchmarks didn't improve until I launched launched boot camp. And then saw the a ma massive improvement, like f literally 500% improvement in speed because the OpenGL drivers are so much better for Microsoft. Okay. Who'd have thunk that? Anyway, they've decided to do something called Metal, which sure. is DirectX. DirectX. A yeah. proprietary, uh, OS proprietary system for writing directly to the Metal, just like DirectX. They get that, so that's a, uh, basically they're following Microsoft's lead on that. I wish uh, like, they would. Like some number of years, by the way. I mean, Man, well, yeah, when did DirectX geez. was for Windows 95, right? 20 uh, years later. Win, WinG was Windows 95, so DirectX okay. was probably... XP? Yeah, somewhere in the interim there, late 90s. So I mean, It's not about gaming. Of, I remember think. Xbox was a direct Xbox. Yeah. Although so they Xbox did. was 2001. It was probably 1998-ish. Okay, almost 20 years. They, di they, did, um, they did show a game... <laughs> Ironically, a game that didn't seem to take advantage of, no, what the of metal at all. <laughs> it, the game itself was a was a cheesy Look, it's ripoff. Just like a rabbit. Yeah, the game like, itself was a cheesy ripoff of Goat <laughs> Simulator. It wasn't even an original ish it's game. Tough. But uh, nevertheless, um, that's another area where you could argue that Microsoft, that Microsoft took the lead and Apple's following. I don't want to use the word copying. Mm. Copying's good. <laughs> well, metal isn't a copy of DirectX, I, but it is kind of an acknowledgement, and I think a disappointing one that uh, that going the open route was not the right choice. Yeah. Uh, it never is, Leo. <laughs> Proprietary, a <laughs> bust. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, 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 I'm you know, open source is like a puppy. It's cute, right? Somebody's telling me that the OpenGL drivers provided by the GPUs on Windows are provided by the manufacturers, not by Microsoft. Uh, that may okay. be the case. I bet you Microsoft does an OpenGL reference driver that much of the code makes it in. But I, in any event, uh, I guess Apple wouldn't allow these companies to do Apple drivers. But OpenGL Apple was drivers. always terrible on... Uh, That's what drives those cars around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a break. I think we've, I think we've ripped on Apple. We're done. Look at us. We like, talked about Apple. Oh, yeah, but we ripped on it. By the so way, okay. I just want to point out at Mary Jo's insistence. I know. I said, let's make this the first item. I did because I think I think it's it's kind it of pointless to just say, hey, they copied them, blah blah blah. Because no. you know everybody's kind of going this way now, you and should it's copy. interesting to compare and contrast a little bit what yeah. what people are doing. It's about making the best experience for users, and if Microsoft thinks of something that's really good, then there's no reason why it's Apple. The only reason Apple gets some heat for it is they have they often have this holier than thou. Oh, everybody's copying us. They sued Microsoft for quite rightly, I think, for for stealing the recycle bin and the. And the <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Hey, you stole my. Apple didn't have a recycle I, bin, I believe, Leo. I believe that's my recycle. That's bin. a spurious. That's I, a spurious lawsuit. I, I believe I have my recycle <laughs> bin. I would like that back, please. Um, our show today brought to you by. <laughs> They dropped that lawsuit when Bill Gates gave uh, Steve Jobs 150 million, I believe. Yep, that's true. 
That was the end of it. <laughs> Thank you. See ya. Our show brought to you by Audible. On your way to work, on your way to school. Listen. We're just walking around the neighborhood like a homeless Audible, person. Like, like a fool. <laughs> I am a big Audible fan. Audible's everywhere now. In fact, Audible is on my Amazon Echo. Oh, they just added it. I can say, I won't say her name. Alexandria, read Audible's, you know, tune in and it will read it to me. It's so good. I love it. I love it. I love it. Picks up what I left off. Mm. Um, that's at Audible, of course, is owned by Amazon. So it makes sense that that would uh, be the case. Audible is the audiobook provider. 180,000 downloadable titles on every facet of literature. I mean, uh, classics, nonfiction. I know, I have a feeling, I have a feeling I know what you're going to pick for this uh, episode of the show, Paul Thorat, because... You do? Well, I'm just guessing there's a new... I notice there's a new uh, novel by one of your favorites. <laughs> that's one of the things I like about... Uh, that's so cool about Audible is they um, they have all the bestsellers. You know, they come out day and date. Publishers finally realize, thank you, that people want uh, to listen. It's a great way when you're at work, in your car, on your uh, Amazon Echo. I put my Echo in the kitchen so I could listen uh, to my books while I'm cooking. It's just a great solution. So what is, what is, we like to do this every Well, what as you suspect, I am listening to the new Stephen King ah, book. I just, I I just finished um, Jurassic Park, which was fantastic. Oh, how was that? I've got to put that in my great. list. Great. Yeah. Really good. And I'm reminded again, of, I love the differences between the book and the movie. And, and it's interesting to me that elements from this book made it into all three of the movies so far. Um, but that's great. Uh, the Stephen King book is called Finders Keepers. It's a sequel to uh, Mr. Mercedes which was kind oh. of a thriller, kind of a novel. It's apparently part two of a trilogy now, so the, the central characters from the first book are back and will be... So should I read Mr. Mercedes? I haven't read yes. that yet. Yes, yeah, definitely read that one first. It's fantastic. Okay. Um, this one is... I'm, I'm, still through, I'm still going through it, so I'm maybe 50% of the way in, but the interesting thing about this to me is the first 30% of the book is uh, alternating stories that take place in the 1970s and then uh, more recently, uh, different characters doing different things in the same place. And it, it's actually kind of fascinating. And so about 30% of the way through the book, all of a sudden, those characters from the original book make their appearance for the first time. And so in the very early going of the book, I was like, this is weird. It's about, it's not really about the same people. And then I got really in, into the story. And then the same people showed up. And I was like, oh, I, I'm not so sure I want these guys here now. <laughs> you know, it was kind of a, kind of interesting. But it's, uh, it's, an, it's a neat story. Uh, and, very, and I'm not done. But it's uh, one of my favorite, favorite authors. Uh, read, I'm sorry. Uh, narrators as well. Will Patton, yeah, the, he's is he Patton. new to? Uh, no, but King? I look. So if I'm not mistaken, this guy is actually a famous character actor, and so he does a lot of uh, Stephen King stuff. Mm. And there is a uh, a collection of Stephen King long stories and like novellas or or whatever. And uh, one of them I think is called 1918 or 1921 or whatever. And it's it's a slight, it's a gruesome story. It's kind of a, a Stephen King horror story or whatever, but. His reading of that is so perfect. Mm. I've actually listened to it multiple times. I just love it. And it's something about his voice combined with the right story where it just kind of works. And and, and he did uh, Mr. Mercedes, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, well. you did a lot fantastic. more than a little. This was Mr. Red. Hush. Oh, you're right. He really Mr. acts exactly. If you look Get this guy, you look genius. him up, see who he is, Rothstein you will immediately say, oh, hand, got I know that. To his feet, then sat on the bed. This is good. Now, this is, I've listened to other Stephen King novels with different, a different narrator. This guy, I think, well, he's got a couple, and they're... Uh, I want to listen to this just because of the narrator. That's what happens, by the way, with Audible. Yeah. He's one of the really good ones. You get, you get to be a fan of the reader. It's as important, uh, yep. you know, you start following the reader. You can do that. Audible actually lets you click yes. the reader's name and see, well, what else has Will Patton read? <laughs> right. I like and this guy. I did guy. that with uh, the guy who read The Martian as well. And actually, if you look that guy up, um, he actually oh, he's so goes good. under different names, and you got to look him up oh. on the web to find out his different names. Uh, the guy who reads the uh, the Martian does a bunch of stuff, and he's his voice is. Fantastic. Remember, we had him in, didn't we? Oh no, that was uh, Daniel Suarez reader. Yeah, the yeah. guy who does the Martian's fantastic. Before you uh, before you uh, see the movie, you got to check out uh, Andy oh, Weir's amazing. I, I have novel. a hard. I, the trailer's out for that movie, and I'm sure it, it looks good. It's going to be great. It's not going to be the book. You know what? I, I'm telling you, the audiobook version of that is amazing. you got to listen. It, 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 Lisa and I listened when we were in Hawaii. We listened together. Um, listening together to a book is an interesting experience. It's fun. 
So if you if you've got a long trip coming up, you can listen together and uh, and it's really yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, just one, and they have young, a lot of uh, children's and young adults fictions, and you can listen with your kids. Studies show that kids who listen to books read more books. Uh, it gets them into reading. There's so many reasons why you should have an Audible subscription. There really are. Go to audible.com slash windows. Sign up today. You'll be signing up for the 30-day uh, free trial with the gold account. That's the book a month plan. But your first month's free. Your first book's free. Cancel anytime in the first 30 days. You'll pay nothing, but you will keep the book. So they're giving you a free book. There's a new Neil Stevenson, which I immediately downloaded. I'm a big fan of his, the author of Snow Crash, and, and I think my all-time favorite novel, uh, Cryptonomicon. Uh, so yeah, so yeah. many good, so many good things. If you so have it's another book that goes has two storylines, right? World War II and modern day. Cryptonomicon, and yeah, yeah. The, the Stephen King book is a lot like that. If you haven't read Cryptonomicon, especially if you're a geek and you're into uh, crypto and that kind of thing, you can get this for free too. And boy, that's a good deal. Forty-two hours and fifty-three minutes, and it is one of the most entertaining books I have ever listened to. Besides being technically super literate, super interesting. Your first book's free. Go to audible.com slash windows. Sign up today. You will thank me. Oh, they got I, Justine's book. Yay, this just came out. Literally, I think yesterday or the day before. And narrated by I, Justine. Of course, we love Justine Azarek. Uh, she's a regular on our shows. We dis I kind of take credit for discovering her. Alex Lindsay uh, found her in Pittsburgh. Brought her to us. We had her on Mac Break uh -oh. Weekly. And I feel like she is a superstar. And uh, I have to listen to see if she mentions me. She probably doesn't. Uh, that's another one you might want to try. I, Justine, go to audible.com slash windows. So I just wanted to correct something real quick. Actually, yes, it was Craig, Craig Wasson. Craig Wasson. 1922. But he does a bunch of Stephen King. He stuff does. That's the one who does most of the Stephen King stuff. Yeah, he's very good, too. But they're, 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 both, they're both really good. But I, look up Will Patton. It, it, just look him up on the web. So he's when a famous guy. Yeah, you'll be like, oh, right, that guy. All right, now you got me. I gotta. I have to look him up. You gotta look him up. He's yeah. It, you'll instantly recognize him. Uh, let me see. Function eleven. Still learning how to use a computer. Hold on. You got to be patient <laughs> with me. Will Patton. I think that put this into the Bing. And uh, yeah, Bing, Bing him. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bing him. Oh yeah. He's right. Colonel Dan Weaver in Falling Skies. He was in Remember the Titans. Remember that. Armageddon, Gone in 60 Seconds, The Punisher. Yeah, he's, he's, it's, it's great when they have a real actor. Um, I think this is the guy who's been hanging out around the uh, back of the studio a lot. No. <laughs> right. Paul <laughs> right. uh, with his eyes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, Audible, I'm just, just kidding. Audible.com slash Windows. Try it today. Um, we love Audible. We give them like eight, 18 minute commercials. I apologize, but it isn't just a commercial. We get to talk about books, so that's fun. Uh, moving on, Windows 10. What's going on? You call it the long and winding road. <laughs> bum, bum. <laughs> What's the latest? Oh, well, that's Mary Jo's headline. You should look. It's a good name. Headline. I like it. <laughs> yourself. Yeah, well, it just feels like every week we kind of. Talk about a couple more little yep. leaked builds, yep. little new feature here, or a little mm -hmm. new recycle bin there. I don't know. It, it, there's not a lot to say right now because um, yeah. Microsoft's in bug fix mode on Windows 10. They're yeah. trying yeah. to get the. It, it is a bunch of small done. things. This is yeah. 10134. Is that, that's where we are. So now. that's the leaked leak. build. It, the oh, official build is 10130. Uh, it was released to the fast ring testers, what, about a week? Uh, two weeks ago, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Two weeks ago, let's say. Um, it was pro it was heading for the slow ring, but I guess there's a couple of big bugs they haven't fixed yet. So they decided to release the ISO ahead of the slow ring release, which has never happened before. Yeah. Um, I'm running 134, which is why I'm having so many problems. It's actually really buggy. Um, should you run leaked builds, Paul? Really? Should I run leaked builds? Should yes. one. <laughs> should one. Yes, should. I should. Where no you, one else. Should one no? Well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> are, is there there's a always security risk. I mean, where are they coming from? Yep. Mm. Yep. <laughs> you, you do it because you because you have you have, you're doing yeah. a, us a favor. Sure. You do it so we don't have to. <laughs> it's getting to the point where well, I mean, you know, I'm writing. I'm obviously I'm working on a book about Windows 10. I mean, I 
Yeah. I need to be as up to date as I yeah. can, assuming it's usable. I mean, day to day. And honestly, this one has some really serious issues. You can't pin stuff to the start menu. It loses stuff that you pin to the taskbar all the time. You install applications. They don't show up in all apps. Um, I had to, you know, I had to do, I, had, I put Hyper-V on the system and it took me forever to figure out where Hyper-V is once you install it because that thing was not available. <laughs> like you couldn't search for it. It was, you know, um, it's buggy. I mean, it, I, and I don't, I'm not complaining about that. It's a it's a leaked build. It's a beta. I get it. It's fine. I mean, there's a reason they haven't given it out to testers. It's it's okay. I'm not, you know, I'm just stating a fact. It's it's a, it's buggy. So, okay, you know, there's nothing dramatic in it compared to, um, you know, the previous build. I, I don't say. think there, from here on out there'll be nothing dramatic if if Microsoft is <laughs> if everything goes knock right, on yes. wood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, right yep. now it's like let's fix the bugs. We get it. Declare this yeah. RTM pretty soon, right? So I, I, I don't think we're going to see. There could be some icon changes. Yeah, uh, small things, and you know they're going to change the name from Project Spartan to Edge in one of the next builds. Yep, so yep. Little, little things Spartan. like that. Yeah, the That's music it. and videos app uh, apps got uh, new icons and yep. little things. Yeah. Hey, here's some good news. Apple says Apple Music will be coming to Windows someday. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Move, moving on. Moving uh, on. Did they just say that? They did. They, no, I'm just I, I'm teasing. <laughs> well, it, it is coming to Windows. I mean, you get it through iTunes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. You, yeah, no? You have to wait till the fall. <laughs> uh, Android sure and Windows in the fall, yeah. Android and Windows in the fall. Yeah. It's okay because we have music you in have our own music. Store. You have your own damn music. <laughs> uh, and is that is Am that I allowed to swear in this show, Leo? <laughs> is that <laughs> could I could I swear? Could I respond? Okay. Yeah, wait a minute. Let me make a note. Said, At this moment, you, my Paul will swear. Go ahead, everybody. I just want to repeat, you said because you have music, to which I would reply, hey, I have music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know? So uh, you have Xbox music, though. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. So take and that And actually, uh, I, bought, I got all those free uh, songs from the... Uh, how many we, albums did we get? Like 20 albums or something. There was a bunch of stuff yeah. last Christmas. Yeah, the last day. I got them all. Yeah. So even if I didn't subscribe to Xbox music, I would absolutely install mm -hmm. music as I need it. I, I have to say, I mean, uh, Apple music to me doesn't seem so necessary. No, uh, no. Every time one of these shows comes up, Google I.O. or WWDC, um, you kind of brace yourself a little bit for that truly disruptive thing where, you yeah. know, I may have to pay attention to this. You know, like, I feel like Google Photos kind of did it. Um, Apple Music, uh, you kind of know it's coming. You have a rough idea what it's going to be. They announce it and you kind of brace yourself. Is this a big deal? And I think ultimately, not really. Because... Yeah, I have Xbox Music. Right. <laughs> should if you're a Windows user, should you just not? Should you eschew all the others and see? I'm no, not. I listen. No, no, no. It's it doesn't really work that way. It's it depends on how you intend to consume music. If you have a lot of your own music, I think one of the nice things that's happened in Xbox Music or the music app is the ability to put it into one drive and then access it from all of your app or all of your devices. I think that capability is really cool, but that doesn't impact someone who doesn't have a big music collection. I mean. If you want to subscribe to, if you like to listen to radio stations, there are a lot of services, many of which are cheap or free, mixed radio, um, Spotify, Pandora, you know, radio, whatever, that can meet that need. If you want a combination of things, your own music, subscription music, radio, Spotify, Google Music does that, Apple will do it, Xbox Music does it. I mean, there's all these different choices. I mean, as a... It, a Windows user is kind of a tough thing because a lot of Windows users are also Android users or iPhone users. And then you kind of pick your the service you're going to use if you're going to use one based on, well, first of all, where's your music really going to be? I mean, I, as a, as a I, look, I used to cart around a laptop where I'd copy a bunch of music down to it. I don't put music on my laptop anymore. Why would I? It's on a device. It's in the cloud. And so I happen to use Xbox Music, but that means it's on my phone. So that's fine. But if I was an Android user and a Windows user, I probably would use Google Music or Spotify. If I was an iPhone user, I'd probably use some Apple thing. Is, uh, the music is, is Spotify either. an equal 
player on all Windows platforms? I mean, it's Windows on Windows Phone. Uh, yeah, actually, it is. I mean, the the Spotify app today is probably roughly analogous to what you get on Android iOS. Okay. See, I think There's Spotify does it all, app. as far as I'm concerned. I, you know, I don't. Yeah, I uh, they well, and by the way, that's the reason. That's why Apple Music exists. Is spot? It's Apple Music is Apple Spotify. I mean, yeah. Spotify just announced new numbers. They're huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah they're the ones to beat. Uh, they were yeah, the first. See, a, a lot of people were tweeting during oh. the Apple keynote that Microsoft should buy Spotify. Did you see a lot of people right. saying that? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, my question is, how committed is Microsoft to music? Well, I mean, right, they have the way, Xbox right. Music, right? But Thank you. Are they, that was my point. Yes. Because they're a productivity and platforms company. Okay, where does music fit in there? I, I mean, you could it's say so it's part of digital life. You know, blah, well, blah, but that's whatever. that's to my point. In other words, yeah. you're either serious about music or you're not. Yeah. If you are, maybe you need to own Spotify. If you're not, what are we? What's this kind of half-ass thing yeah. we're doing with Xbox Music? I mean, I, I do use it. And I like it. I do too. Um, but I have yeah. a hard time <laughs> recommending it to people. Yeah. It stinks on Android and iOS. I mean, it's there and it's going to get better. But yeah. I mean, how could you and look at an, like an iPhone user in the eye and say, "Oh no, no, forget the Apple thing. <laughs> That's, right. It's so cute. You should use Xbox Music." I didn't nope. even know this till recently. I, I guess because I hadn't been doing research on on speakers and home stereo kind of stuff. But Sonos um, doesn't let you stream Xbox Music. Right. That's right. At all. You That's know, right. so uh, there are things like that, and you're like, okay, like whose fault is this? Is it because yeah, I don't know uh, Microsoft that works. isn't opening well, up by the way, that's, API? That, that's related to what I was just talking about when he yeah. said, you know, as a right. Windows user. I mean, it's not yeah. so much you're a Windows user. Right. I mean, you could be a, you could use Windows from now until the day you die, but if you have a Sonos machine, a Sonos system in your house, yeah. if you have an Android phone, right. it doesn't necessarily make sense for you to use Xbox Music right. just because right. Microsoft makes it. I mean, well, there's yeah. there a lot of choices. You know, there's a lot of yeah. factors. By the way, I let me correct myself. Uh, you you were yeah. right, Paul. If you update to the latest iTunes, June thirtieth, Windows will get Apple okay. Music. So, I, I mean, I don't really. Yeah, care. it's on the it's on the website. I I apologize. So it's uh, it's it will you will get it. And apparently a new uh, version of uh, iTunes, although, yeah, that's a little surprising because that means they. I mean, I, I guess I, they have enough still, programmers to do that. And it's by the way, it's already there. You know, if Apple were ever to take the drastic step of redoing iTunes from scratch, I, I mean, at that point, it's kind of a fifty-fifty. Well, that's what I thought they were going to do. It's certainly what they need to do. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're well overdue for that. Well, I, iTunes on Mac and Windows is a lot like Mac and Windows. It's a traditional, big, right. complex, long-lived thing. It's got all this stuff in it from years ago. And there's, there's good and bad to that. You know? Yeah. So, for better or worse, uh, it looks like it's going to come out June 30th uh, on those platforms. It's just Android <laughs> that's delayed. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I guess yeah, the, but uh, but what good is that? Because uh, it's not on Windows Phone either. So mobile to me, it seems like mobile is the key on all of this. Maybe not. I, th I think so. And that's uh, going to be a problem for Windows Phone guys because when Beats Music came out, right, long before Apple bought them or a year or so before, um, I thought Beats Music was a very credible competitor. I mean, no one was really paying attention to it, but I looked at it. You look at the the price, and they have a family plan or had a family plan. And um, cross-platform, wonderful. Yeah. Then Apple bought them, and of course there are fears, what about the Windows Phone app? And then Apple's turning it into Apple Music, and guess what there isn't? A Windows Phone app, so. So they're not going to port the uh, Beats app. Is the, does the Beats app still work on Windows Phone? Well, I, I mean, does, you probably. have to think it's going to be end of life at some right. point, so maybe it works for a little while. I don't know. I don't know what the plans are. I guess what I thought is that Apple would probably do a XAML cross-platform-ish thing well, and, and put that out in the fall but maybe that's but, but that's why would they build a new app on windows right because they need to because they're I long overdue <laughs> i mean i i look if you went into an apple store and you said how come my itunes doesn't work that great they'd say well you're using windows so right. come on over to the dark side right. that's how you solve that problem it's not by making another app for windows you know i, I don't think they're going to do that Personally. You know who might really be most peeved by all of this is current Beats users who have a Windows Phone app. Yeah, that's what I like. Right. Their UI, who like the yep. sentence building thing that they do. 
That sure. all, you they know. showed the, remember the purple balls that rolled out. Everybody that's does purple beats. balls. That's yeah, but that's oh, okay. beads. That's, but everybody does something like that. that. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Roy, let's see. Windows as a service and the LTSB. <laughs> the good old LTSB. Oh, the LTSB. Oh, the LTSB. <laughs> Isn't that like a Lincoln model? <laughs> a Lincoln LTSB. <laughs> what it's is like that? riding on air. Wait, 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 don't tell me. Windows LTSB. I have no idea. What is that? No. It's another Microsoft acronym you, you will hear a lot more about in the future. Long-term servicing branch. Ooh. So remember when I was trying to describe this on a show recently where I said there's like this matrix, right, where you have all the additions of Windows 10 and then you have the branches about how regarding how quickly they'll be serviced, meaning how fast will they get um, security updates and new feature updates there. And there are all these different branches and they match up with the different additions. Well, we found out this week one interesting kind of ca caveat. If you're a Windows 10 Enterprise user, you are uh, going to have available to you LTSB, which means you don't have to take new features that Microsoft pushes out for Windows 10. You can just take security. But if you do that, you're not going to get the Edge browser. Um, so that was kind of an interesting little, mm. oh, wait, what? And the reason is um, Microsoft plans to update Edge very frequently with not just security uh. fixes, but also features. So if you're on the branch that doesn't take new features, what's the point of having right. Edge? Uh, we're wondering now, maybe there'll be other kinds of things like that. Hey, if you guys want to be on this branch where you don't take new stuff, maybe you're not going to get something else too. So I'm kind of digging around on that and seeing if there are other limitations if you take the long-term servicing branch. Right now, I don't know. Um, I think the, uh, you're, that means you're LTBS SBQ, I believe. <laughs> Yes. Uh, it's like the new emergency phone number that they introduced in the IT crowd where they have to exactly. sing it because it's like yeah. 17 digits. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that, that's what you should know right now. Um, if there are other limitations, we'll, we'll keep you up to date. And as far as we know for now, the only people who can even take the LTSB branch are enterprise. Uh, though there is some question about whether Ed, the Windows 10 education SKU is going to get there. So there's some conflicting information out there about that. But that's right where now they're it's usually just, so good about communicating. Um, Are you sure there's some conflicting information? There may, there may be some conflicting information hmm. about that. <laughs> Can you go back and forth? I mean, once you once you commit to the LTSB lifestyle, do you have to? Yeah. I would like you to know? be serviced more quickly this week. <laughs> <laughs> I I. Don't know. I think when once you take LTSB, it means you're you're not taking feature updates, and I don't know if you can switch that off at some point and say, "Oh, you know what? Now I do want the feature updates." I'm not sure. So. Cool. Uh, I just love cool. the added complexity. Yes, it just keeps a lot of consultants in business who have to tell people about how to license things, and it's good. And it keeps us having jobs too because we have to explain them as well. <laughs> So don't complain, I, Paul. You need a job. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I do need a job. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's the biggest title of the show. Don't complain, we need a job. Uh, <laughs> that's it right yep. there in a nutshell. Uh, okay. Stop complaining. This is our job. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Ugh. Surface Hub. Where did I read? Uh, I didn't see. I just saw the headline on my feed today. Somebody did like a, the the behind the scenes, this, this true story behind the hub. Did yep. you did you see that? Oh, that was probably it was on, yeah. um, Fast Company. I think. Fast Company. Harry McCracken or something. Yeah. Like Harry McCracken. Oh, Harry, the technologizer. Yeah. Yeah. He's good on that stuff. Yes. So, uh, what's the story? So you guys. Uh, may remember Surface Hub, we saw this We saw this for the very first time in January at the Windows 10 event in Redmond. And Surface Hub is a big, <clears throat> there's two models, 54 inch screen, oh, sorry, 55 inch screen. And then there's a, an 84 inch screen. They're those big conferencing systems that Microsoft built using the technology they first bought when they got Perceptive Pixel. So they're these big multi-touch displays that you can use um, Multiple people can use them at the same time because they have 100 points of multi-touch. Uh, you can use them with pens made for the Surface Hub. Kind of, They almost look like magic markers, so you can use digital ink with them. And today we found out how much they're going to cost and when they're going to be available, which were the two pieces of information we ha did not have up to this point. So now we know 
<clears throat> excuse me, I'm having horrible allergies this week. Um, July 1 is the pre-order date for both of the models. They're going to be available in more than 20 markets worldwide, and they're going to be available starting in September. And the price is, for the 55-inch model, $7,000, which includes the hardware, uh, the operating system, the software, which is like a custom version of Skype for Business, some custom applications like OneNote and possibly other things. And the larger one, $19,999, $999, other, otherwise $20,000, for the 84-inch, which has higher resolution display um, and all the same software peripheral type things uh, that are part of it. So, yeah, the big-ass table is now a big-ass conferencing system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember those surface way, I, 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 I Just a couple of positive <laughs> notes. I, I think the Surface Web is awesome, and I want one. I wish it wasn't. It's so one expensive. of those things cool. that has withstood the test of time. Like uh, the more I see it, the better it gets. And you know, there's been some debate on the price, whether it's too expensive or the right price, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think Microsoft has a pretty credible case of explaining the economics it's of a these business, rooms. It's and, a business device. And it, it is yeah, definitely a business that's, device. They can pay, they can pay 20 grand. I mean, I'm desperate to have this thing in my living room, but the truth yeah. is, <laughs> Me you know, too. these are aimed at enterprise conference Me rooms. Too. And collaborative spaces, you know, you can put them on a mm -hmm. stand and wheel them around if you want. And, you know, $7,000, I mean, it's a computer plus a 55-inch display. That's not... Yep. That's not completely out of it. It supports multiple pen and touch inputs at the same yeah. time. Um, it, the cameras are amazing. The, the technology behind this thing is amazing. Of course, the one I want is that. the 84 inch. The big one. It's like yeah. $20,000. <laughs> Price yeah, of a car. The big boy. Yeah. Yeah, sure. the, the, the 84 inch one is based on uh, Core i7. The, the smaller one is Core i5. So these are really true computers. They're not just displays now. Right. It's but a gaming rig, I think is what how, she's saying. <laughs> how upgradable are the guts? Like if uh, if you wanted to put a yeah. new CPU in there down the road, is it I like a module? No. So I don't know anything about that, but I don't believe I'm so. Doubtful of So that. think of it as like a Dell One or something, like a, all, yeah. or an iMac. It's an all in one yeah. thing. It is. Yep. And it's just with a giant monitor. I don't think this is, I don't think you're going to have a problem with that kind of stuff going down the road. I mean, RAM upgrades might be interesting, but. Yeah, we're, you know, my desktop. Yeah, we're fast enough, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hate to yeah. say that because, you know, any, any time in the past you've said that you were wrong, but I think actually, <laughs> in fact, yeah. at this point, uh, you know, fast i7 is, is probably going to last you yeah. 10 years. I think the compute right? stuff is going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh, and Especially, what, they, what you know, this isn't a compute engine. This is really about PowerPoint and, you know, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's what it is. It's for me. You really me. are only it's running one meat. app at, at a time, basically. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. yeah. I mean, like, fact, the i5 is, Skype for business. The i5 is probably fine. Yeah. yeah. But did, you yeah. don't buy it. You don't, it's, you're not buying it for the processor. You're buying it for the screen. The size right. of the screen is what yes. you're paying yeah. for. Yes. And this is this was interesting. They're mostly going to be selling this through authorized dealers and resellers who know how to sell this kind of thing. But... Also through the Windows stores. A Microsoft store. Which is interesting. I mean, Microsoft stores. <laughs> See, for Microsoft one of our stores. shows, this yeah. would make so much sense to have for maybe Coding 101 or Know How to yeah. Have. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. for a, not, not uh, more than one of your shows, because I think this is the type of thing where you could make the argument that you could retail or shows around this kind of display. Right. Where maybe, uh, yeah. you know, instead of sitting behind a desk and talking, you could have that someone standing next to a screen and show what's happening. Here's the Internet weather report. Yeah. Uh, no, there's definitely some shows uh, we'd use yeah. this for. Is it a 4K display? What is the resolution on it the is. display? It is. Yep, 4K on the big one. Yeah. 1080p on the small. Plenty big enough. The issue we've had, you know, since Tech TV days, 20, almost 20 years ago, we've wanted to put, uh, you know, they've but they've had these displays. You CNN uses them and stuff, and we've but they're, they're, they're putting them on the air is tough because you have studio lights. Right. And you have to; they have to be bright enough to... Well, they're custom, of, too, right? They must be super expensive. Well, they used to be. I, I mean, this is actually pretty cheap. Six, no, I mean, the, the things that CNN would have been using. Oh, God, that, years, yeah, yeah, that thing. Crazy. Well, they still use it. You know, sure. in fact, they really highlight it. They'll, look what's going on in Syria, and then <laughs> push it around. And, I, I, I Honestly, the nicest, not the nicest, but one of the many nice things about these devices is, is that it's Windows 10. And that yeah. means they run Windows apps, and it yeah. might make more yeah. sense to run... Right. Touch enable apps, you know, right. universal apps, apps for the most part. Yeah. You can run anything you want, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll work on there. Yeah. Stoic in the chat room says, I'm talking myself into getting one. I am. Yeah, I was I was thinking that too. I'm like, you're gonna get one, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> the, really the only I, question I is it. the seven thousand or the twenty thousand. Oh Leo, there's no question. Twenty thousand? 
Oh, f- now, get, get the little one. Get the 55 incher. The little it's one's cute. Forms, it's 7,000. <laughs> <laughs> I should have Mary Jo Listen, on this Leo, shoulder, Paul Leo. on this shoulder. <laughs> you want to drive a Fiat 500 yeah, or no. you want to drive a BMW 3 yeah. Series? Yeah, I'm, I'm worth saying. it. I'm worth it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Lisa. You, Leo, Leo, <laughs> do you want the clown car or do you want the uh, the luxury car? Timing's everything. We just paid, uh, you know, we paid quarterly taxes as you're supposed to do, yes. but I never did. Uh, but now, really? Now, yeah. You, you're really? supposed to just like pay them once? I would pay at the end of the year. What's it like paying a mortgage right. once a year? Well, the IRS doesn't like it. In fact, they've gotten – it's oh, the penalties geez. are worse and worse now. I don't think I could do quarterly. Non, like you have annual, to. No, the, I mean I do quarterly. I don't think I could ever do – Right. No, and that's what happens is the first time somebody goes freelancer because yeah. yeah. normal people, if you're an employee, you pay once a year. Right. Well, right. actually, you withhold every paycheck, but uh, sure. you, think, you feel yeah. like you're paying once yeah. a year, but as soon as you're a freelancer <laughs> – you got to remember every every quarter to pay. Not just remember. The best part is you have to estimate. I get, get, yeah. Right. You, you want to know what my quarter? Do you want to know? Just at it. Are you curious what my quarterly? What do you uh, think it's gonna? What do you think it's gonna? Be? I paid on the fifteenth. It's, it's coming like a up. Roulette. You, know? you want to know what I'm paying in five days for quarterlies? Three hundred thousand dollars. Thanks. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Might not be a good time to buy the surface. That's my pump, that's my point. You know what? I disagree. <laughs> that could get sucked right into this it's bill and no deductible. one would even notice. It's tax, tax deductible. deductible. That's true. Yep. They oh, they changed appreciation too. We used to Leo, accelerate all our depreciation. We can't do that. This screen is gonna pay for itself. <laughs> not to mention a you know, the quarter of a million dollar website we're launching. What's Lisa doing right now? Let's get her over here. <laughs> Lisa is going <laughs> Yeah, she is. No, She's like, no, shut them off. Kind Pull of the plug. Right now. This is not a good time. <laughs> I think we're hitting the line of credit. Let's put it that way. Uh, but what's, you know, right? What's another 20 grand? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> when you, <laughs> Leo, $20,000 in the scheme of things is what, one third of 20%? It's like 7% of your tax bill. I know. And that's 7%. a quarterly tax bill. A single yeah. Not even the whole year. That's one. That's a three-month period. It's funny when it's a business. Money gets very different when it's but seven even divided though it, by four. It's, it's my. Like, it's money. It's like one point eight percent. It's nothing. Every annual tax. It's bill. nothing. This is a line item. You spent more than this on Ethernet cables. You're evil, Paul Theron. He is evil. <laughs> Just, you are evil. I don't see Ethernet cables on the air, Leo. How are they paying for anything? Yeah, that's a good point. This, these, this, this would it be visible point. on the show. This, this no is more smartwatches. Instead, save the yeah. money. Boy, I, I wonder I if someone at Microsoft watches. could give you, a, uh, give you a deal on this thing. No, we wouldn't do that because we're not that kind of girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I see I've crossed the line. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we really, we don't. I couldn't do that. Because then yeah. it would that would taint, taint our coverage of the whole. Taint right. We have to pay retail, full retail. I, I do a radio show. Consumer Reports? Leo, listen. Consumer Reports buys everything. I know. At full retail. I know, I know. I, there's a radio think, show I way, do. Seriously? Now, yeah. You think they don't see these guys coming a mile away now? <laughs> yeah. Consumer Reports oh. is up, by, like uh, they're buying cars. <laughs> it's weird. This guy has bought 17 cars at this dealership <laughs> in the past year. I wonder... What if he works at Consumer Reports? <laughs> oh, really? I model myself on them. I try to do that, but uh, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Facebook versus Microsoft. Oh boy! <laughs> yes. Oh boy! Oh boy! Sheesh! Well, That's the story. <laughs> let's just say I thought they were partners. What happened here? What happened? Okay. So I, I think the I think the short version is that Facebook used to have an API that people could access and they could you could access you could share on Facebook you could like things. On what Facebook. what are we talking about here? The Facebook Connect. Sorry. Thing? Uh, so Microsoft invented the phrase Facebook Connect, but what really happened was that Facebook is uh, eliminating the Graph API. Oh. Which is what this Facebook Connect thing is in Microsoft. Oh. Well, they, so if you they want to connect your it, Facebook, right? Yeah. Didn't we they did evolve what? It too. It's they, evolved. They evolved the Graph. API one way from to one to two, right? Okay. Well, I think. Microsoft's been using it since 2010. Where do they use it? In uh, they used it first in Windows Phone. Okay. And the idea was that you could sign into your Facebook account through the accounts. Um, they didn't call it this, but Control Panel, and your Facebook calendar things would show up in the calendar app. Your Facebook contacts would show up in People. Uh, if you looked at a photo that someone else was yeah, sharing, yeah, that was nice. Like, the hubs. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It was the 
it was part of their integration strategy. All it's, of, it's, not it, all, but most online services have these APIs. Twitter does. Yeah. And you uh, told me, and this is true, and I really liked it. When you, before you get a Windows Phone, Leo, make sure you go to your Microsoft account and connect update them. it. Connect everything together. Get your Twitter in there, your Facebook, because it will all just go. And every time I get a new computer now with Windows and I yeah. log into my Windows account, it knows all my friends. It knows it's great. Well, yeah. Not anymore. So that's, huh? going, that's going away, Leo. Oh. Um, so the, the problem is, uh, well, the, well, isn't there? Come on, is Facebook? Surely Facebook's going to replace that capability with something comparable. No? So. Uh, <laughs> my understanding is not, not exactly. So uh, Microsoft has done this everywhere. It's in one Outlook.com. It's in OneDrive. It's uh, in Office, you know, Outlook. It's in uh, Windows 8, obviously. Um, Windows Phone, all versions, et cetera, et cetera. Facebook announced some time ago they were getting rid of this. And so in Windows Phone 8.1, we see the, the mobile solution to this is that Facebook's app can integrate with the OS and Facebook will do it. And so... They do this on Android and on iOS as well. It, it goes through the app. And then the level of integration you get is based on what you have in the OS. And so if you have a Windows Phone 8.1 device, nothing has changed. It actually still works. You can see your contacts in the people hub and so forth. It's, it's okay. Um, but everywhere else, it's been blown apart. Wow. And uh, I don't, you know, Facebook obviously, and it's not just Facebook. I will say the dark side to the integration strategy that Microsoft had with Windows Phone, the original vision, which we all love as users, is that it doesn't really help those brands. You know, what Facebook wants, what Twitter wants, what whatever app wants, or I should say service wants, is for you to install their app so that when you think Facebook, it's what's going on on Facebook, you go to Facebook, you see the Facebook branding, it gets, it's infused into your head, this is how you access Facebook. Um, it's a really neat thing when you can integrate it into the OS mm -hmm. for the user. It's not a great thing for the brands. Mm. And so that Microsoft has been slowly kind of decoupling things, and uh, they changed the model in 8.1 uh, to accommodate this, and that's why we see that change. And now that stuff happens through the Facebook app. You don't uh, add an account through the accounts control panel. You install the Facebook app, and then the Facebook apps ask you, do you want to connect? And you do it on the, at the level of the phone. So you can't connect your Microsoft account to Facebook anymore and have it be everywhere. You can only do it in these specific ways. And right now, I think it's just Windows Phone 8.1. Um, so the, the, or the question is, uh, when Windows 10 ships, will there be a universal app version of the Facebook app that does the same thing? I, I would say almost certainly yes, although no one has announced that. The bigger issue is the online service stuff. Um, it doesn't work. And there work are some the workarounds. Um, Right. Okay. There are workarounds. Uh, well, the, well, you mean that list that Microsoft supplied? Yeah, the list that Microsoft published. There are, but if you look at individual services, in some cases, the answer is simply, this just doesn't work anymore. Right. Right. <clears throat> right. So do you yeah. want to hear a statement that Facebook just sent me like right before yes. the show started? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So they said, we, um, one of the changes we made to our API was so people was that people can only now share their information within the apps. And the reason we did this was... We heard feedback from people who were surprised when their friends were sharing information with the app, um, you know, like birthdays, photos, likes, blah, blah, blah. Oh so they want to protect that, they say. That's uh, laughable, they also, but please continue. They also said they told all developers, not just Microsoft, a year in advance to change their apps and upgrade. Oh. Yep. <laughs> is this going to happen? I, said, so, uh, uh, I mean, because <laughs> Apple does the same thing on an iPhone. Right. Is it going to impact them, or is it Facebook and Microsoft? Maybe they don't no, want to. No, maybe they no, kind of. It's, are... it's all all developers. They oh. said these changes apply to all developers who build apps connected to I Facebook. Think that's a big mistake. Well, no, no, but I, I mean, the thing to understand is that Android and iOS never did this. Oh, they, they didn't? Well, they make a they side, the they made a Microsoft side deal. Microsoft did this everywhere. Right. That was their big deal. We're going to integrate with everything. Right. Um, you know, when you, to get this to work through, um, you know, Android, say, you need the Facebook app. They're already doing it the right way. Yeah, oh, I see so. what you're saying. Yeah, I have to, you're right. I have to install Facebook on yep. iPhone yeah. or Android yep. for yeah. that to work. Yes, got it. I, I think that Microsoft expected they were going to update the API or something. Like I, I think they thought this wasn't going to come to a crashing halt. I mean, there have to be hundreds of millions of people using this functionality without really even remembering yeah. that they did it. I you am, get this yeah. kind of dialogue where you're like, would you like to connect your Facebook account to your 
Microsoft account so you can share photos or something. You're like, yeah, of course, of course. Hmm. Even something as simple as you have Windows Photo Gallery on your Windows 7 PC. What, you can connect it to Flickr. To, I think you can connect it to Google using a third-party add-in. You can connect it to Facebook. Of course I want to do that. that right. I happen to use this app to manage photos. I want to use it to post photos to Facebook. Why wouldn't this work? Well, it doesn't work anymore. That's one of the things that broke. Can Microsoft fix this? I guess if they go back and somehow do something <sighs> do to it take the, advantage do of it that the API. Way. Do it the but Facebook way. But if you read way. there, if you read that support page, I, I Microsoft clearly was blindsided by this, although I agree that they it was told public. them they gave them a year. She yeah. said well, that. It, was, it was public a year ago. They, they yep. did publicly announce they were doing this. Yeah. Um, oh, but maybe they that, don't, maybe people at Microsoft don't read the papers. <laughs> I well, would expect that they have a more direct form of communication. Facebook, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like they knew. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I must yeah. have skipped the page. And the, uh, <laughs> it's just like, what? They were serious? What? I mean, I, I this is bizarre to me that this happened. Yeah. Oh. So I, it, it, if you read the Microsoft um, support page, it's very fatalistic. <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of, oh, don't worry. Listen, uh, if you could just hold on for a couple of weeks, we're going to have a solution. It's like, this just isn't going to work anymore. No, and you know, it's interesting. Microsoft wouldn't comment on this story this week. Like a lot yeah. of people were asking them for comment. And yep. I don't think anybody got comment from them. So I don't know. Like, it would be nice to know if anyone's listening from Microsoft what the game plan is. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. I don't care what happened as much as like, what are you going to do now more? Yeah. All righty. Um, let's take a break. We come back. We're going to talk more about this kind of stuff. Skype, Xbox One. We got picks. We got beer. We got the whole thing coming up. But first, a word from our sponsor, Prosper.com. You know, it's a, it's a really good example of what the Internet can do. Uh, and the internet is, as you know, reinventing so many uh, traditional ways of doing business. And one thing that uh, that could really use an, an update is borrowing money. You don't want to go to Louis Louis the Loan Shark down the street. You don't want to go to friends and family. You probably don't want to go to the bank even. But you can now get a low fixed rate loan from Prosper.com simply by going to Prosper.com/twit. It's up to $35,000 in as few as five days. The way it works is Prosper is a marketplace bringing people with money to lend together with people who have to borrow or want to borrow money. And, uh, you know, it's all, it's, it's, all, it's all regulated and safe and everything. I think there's even a kind of like a fake bank that because the government requires a rubber stamp or whatever. But, but the simple fact of the matter is that you can go to the website, prosper.com slash twit, give them just a few basic pieces of information. I, you know, it's very simple. You'll get a quote for an amount of money you can borrow, your, your low fixed rate. I think you'll be very pleased. I can almost promise you it's less than you're paying, let's say, for credit cards. That's the worst way to borrow. This, would, in fact, would be a great way to pay off those high-rate uh, credit cards, kind of get, get your life back in order here. Or, you know, there's a lot of other things you could do. You could uh, fix up your house. You could start a business. I mean, just think what you could do with up to $35,000. And quick, too. Do not put more debt on your credit cards. Pay them off. To find out what your rate is without affecting your good credit, prosper.com slash twit. And uh, for a limited time, Prosper is offering you a $50 Visa gift card with your low-interest loan just because you saw it on twit. Go to uh, prosper.com slash twit. Get up to thirty five grand in your account in as few as five days and that $50 Visa gift card. Really a, a perfect example of how the Internet can make things just better for everybody. Prosper. Friction free, I guess they call it. Prosper.com slash twit. We're talking Windows and Microsoft with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. The latest news from Redmond. Uh, by the way, kudos to Microsoft. Apple had that weird bug where if you post, post pasted just the perfect weird Unicode string and messages, <laughs> it crashed it. Yep. Uh, it turned out, Sky I think that what's happening is hackers are obviously looking at this, uh, mm -hmm. you know, overflowing the text rendering engine. Same thing with Skype. Uh, Microsoft fixed it in less than a day. Uh, last time I checked, two weeks in, still not fixed yeah. on I iOS. But Leo, Apple Music. But Apple Music. 
They're busy. They've got other they things going they on. They can't fix bugs. Can't they fix they're everything. They're changing the world. I what mean, maybe we don't know. Maybe it's a harder thing to fix, but it's just it's feels like Apple should be if now should have patched this one by now. Let me just check to see. No, still eight point three. Where do they make all their revenues again? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, hey, do you want to pay attention hey, a little hey, bit? Hey. No? So, um, while I, I wouldn't necessarily say Microsoft's been the best steward of Skype, they have kept it going. They have kept it up to date. Right. They've kept their hands off, that's for sure. Yeah. My God. We this is all Skype. My ho this my if you business. Didn't know, if you didn't know any better, Skype would still be a, a separate entity. Yeah, that's true. Skype.com. My Home blogs. They, it's, my it's business crazy. is Skype. It's, but every one of our co-hosts who doesn't live in Petaluma, and that's pretty much everybody, sure. uh, comes in via Skype. So Skype for web is very interesting to me. Tell me about that. Yes. Um, Skype for web is the version of Skype you can run in a browser. Mm. Um, this is kind of like a Google's WebRTC. Yes. Right? Yeah. I think so. Um, Microsoft launched Skype for web in a limited beta last year. And now it's open to anyone in the U.S. or the U.K. who wants to try it out. Hey, what are the what are the um, requirements? Do I have to use Sparta? I do not. <laughs> it's not Apple, Leo. Uh -huh. No. Windows with Internet Explorer 10 or above, yeah. Chrome, Firefox, um, Safari 6 I wonder if it works on Chrome OS. How about that? Well, that would be uh, really cool. Actually, I don't think it does. Oh. So. No. Um, one of the issues with Skype on the web is that uh, video and audio conversations require a plugin. Ah, yes. okay. I'm pretty for sure now. Chrome that makes sense. is off, yeah, yep. that makes off the sense. list for now, but I, I, that's probably coming. Right. So it doesn't work on Chromebooks without some pretty yeah. serious workarounds yeah, yeah. at this okay. point. Yeah. I, bet, I bet it comes. Um, um, yeah, they say it doesn't. We'll just and that's not Microsoft's <laughs> fault. I, I think that that's completely reasonable. Right. Yeah, they're using it. And they plug. said um, once our WebRTC is baked in, then oh, yes. So they will use WebRTC. Good. They will at some point. That's yeah. fantastic. Yes. Uh, and if you're out not in the U.S. or U.K., Microsoft says in the next few weeks, they'll also extend the Skype for Web beta to people in other countries. So it's coming <laughs> very broadly. We don't know when it'll be final, but it's definitely getting more right. broadly exposed. Yep. What do you think that uh, strategy is all about? Skype <laughs> like one on the web. Skype, one, one Skype, Skype, like one Microsoft. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's got to be everywhere. I mean, maybe you have a work computer and you can't install apps. Ah, right? But right. You can, you can right. access it on the web, or maybe yep. uh, you're on vacation, you're in an internet cafe, you're at someone else's yep. house, whatever it is, and yet for some reason you have to use Skype, and yep. uh, you can do it on someone's computer for a better experience. You know, you can just sign into your account. Doesn't Facebook use uh, Skype? Facebook use for Skype. Facebook Messenger, actually. No, oh, they, they used to use the video. They used, to, I mean, and yeah, they branded yeah, yeah, yeah. it Skype when they first That's did right. it. That's right. Right, they did. Yeah. I don't know if they still use Skype. That's a good question. Because we could screw them if they do. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> sure. Turnabout Get is fair play. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Get them back. I like it. I told you a <laughs> year like ago. You think. <laughs> I told you a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> I told you a year ago. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Put it in the classifieds. Um, okay. Cool. And then um, what about this Skype translator? I think this is very cool. Very cool. So this is the real-time language translation capability that Microsoft's building. Right now it's only in four languages. It's in Mandarin, Italian, Spanish, and English, I think. Uh, and what it does is it lets you have a Skype conversation with someone, you speak your language, you hear the other side hears it in their language mm. in all in near real time Amazing. and you also can do this with instant messaging too in even more languages yeah. so um up till now the skype translator has been a separate app that you had to download but very soon microsoft's going to be building skype translator functionality right into um skype for windows so if you're running uh on, I, I think it's on Windows 7 and above, I get to look at my story. Wow. Um, yeah, you'll, the desktop versions of Skype, not so not the modern versions, but the desktop versions will have Skype Translator built right in to them, which will be pretty cool, that starting in really late exciting. summer. That is so That is I know, neat. it is very cool. But only the yeah. modern version, not the desktop version. No, only the desktop. Only the not desktop, the not the modern, okay. Right, right. Um, I asked them if they're going to do this also with the modern version um, of Skype for Windows 8 and above, and they declined to comment on that. They said the what version now? 
Because the you know, don't you get the vibe that that has changed? I mean, uh, <laughs> when the modern app was coming up in the world, they were like, hey, yeah. this is where everything's going to be. Yep. And now yep. it's kind of moved back to the desktop version. I know. Because I said, what about the modern one? That was the one you guys yeah. were pushing for everybody. And they just said, well, they didn't say no. They just said, um, we have nothing to say at this time. So it may just be a case of when Windows 10 comes out and it's the Skype that's built into that at some point. You know, because right. they've said Skype is going to be built in with Windows 10. Although it won't be at RTM, obviously. But sometime after that, maybe once Skype is built into Windows, it'll have Skype Translator built in. Just a guess. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. So see. yeah, that's pretty cool though. Um, so if you're if you're running Skype desktop, that'll be coming starting late summer. I, that's such a miraculous product. It is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's going to be really cool as more languages get added and you know, people can use it. It comes out of preview. It'll be very, very interesting. I just got the uh, Skype seven on my Mac. Some I don't know. It seems. I mean, they updated. I mean, I'm. I'm, I'm well, actually, so, yeah. So they just updated almost all the clients. I mean, oh, okay. Most of this is not particularly yeah. interesting. Do you know um, what they add? I mean, is it some big deal? Yeah, I do. In in on the Mac, they added uh, the chat input field. You can send photos, files, contacts, oh. and video messages. They really want us to use chat, don't they? Mm -hmm. Really badly. Yep. That's that. Okay, so I'm just saying, Skype chat is the Apple Music of chat. <laughs> it's like I already got a chat. I don't need. Yeah. Do, it's like the uh, Windows Live Messenger of chat. <laughs> yes, very much so. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I uh, guess it, uh, do do businesses <laughs> use Skype chat? Aren't well, they use well, it like they, Hip Chat they use and Skype Slack for and yeah and, yeah. and other or, or Yammer or whatever. Skype for business, really. Skype for yeah. business. Yeah, yeah, Skype for business. Which can integrate with Skype for consumer. Chat is, is kind of going through this, or messengering anyway, is going through this resurgence yeah. thanks to Slack, uh, HipChat. These, we, I, we actually use both. We use HipChat internally for our communications. Our web developers use Slack. And it's a way that uh, teams work together really nicely, kind of asynchronously, and yet responsively, quickly, as opposed to email. So do you think that this has to do with people's familiarity with text messaging on phones, that we... Yeah. This is something that we, I think, you know, the notion of sitting and typing messages maybe was something we thought was, would go away. And now because we do that on phones, yeah. the notion Texting. of being on a computer yeah. suddenly... Partly yeah, that no. and partly the failure of email, frankly. Yeah. Um, I mean, the natural sure. venue for all this would be email, but it's so messed up and clogged up and there's so much yeah. of it and it's hard, to, it's hard to follow a thread of conversation and so forth. So it's really... It's possible, depending yeah, on which solution yeah. Yeah. you use. So it's, the, it's the simultaneously the failure of email and the, the, the kind of familiarity and ease of use of a solution we already have mm. uh, and extending it to Teams. Next up, BlackBerry <laughs> messaging is coming back too. <laughs> that's what yeah. BlackBerry thought. Yeah, well, they, that's why Snapchat exists actually. It's, uh, yeah. We just want something secure. Well, WhatsApp, that's why it got three billion, WhatsApp. right? Yeah. Um, so businesses use link sonic frequency says every day we use link. no, no. Yeah. well link the Skype for business is the new business. version but that's that's video and it's, audio link has Everything chat Skype link has i am it's it i am as well okay yeah. it's all that stuff yeah mm -hmm. it's more than that too by the way it's online meetings it's the yeah. the features sharing. the features well that's the key on the feature set of these developer tools like slack and HipChat is you get screen sharing get video t conversations but you also get plugins to all of the tools that you use plugins i i would imagine link would plug into crm and stuff like that right yeah, yeah. well they're built they, this is interesting you're bringing this up because this week we found out microsoft's integrating skype for business right into the office 365 user inter interface so it's skype for business is getting integrated into more and more microsoft products and it's going to be the default yep. chat the default communication interesting platform. well i mean think about it you go up to like a sharepoint share and you find a document some other people in your team worked on and you want to communicate about it with them right Right. There have been ways in SharePoint to do that forever. Um, you could, if you have the whole thing, you might think about I'll, maybe I'll send an email, or whatever. But you know, being able to open a Skype conversation right there actually makes plenty of sense. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's how you're communicating yep. already. Oh, yeah. And you don't have to switch out of the app, which is nice. Right. Yeah. You do kind of want to have one platform, though. What you the mm -hmm. problem with email is that information gets scattered in a variety of places. The key to the success of these. Yeah solutions is that all the conversations are here they're archived you can roll back you can search them 
what was that link David gave me uh, a month ago to do this, and I could find it. Yep. Those yep. things. That's it's actually really handy for uh, project-based uh, operations, and I imagine for sales and CRM and other things. Um, do, 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 I, I'm, I'm a little tired. <laughs> I was playing. Um, uh, I was in Tamriel all night, playing. Oh. Uh, yeah. Shay. Yeah. Shay. What is it called? I know Elder Scrolls Online. Is that what it's called? I have no idea. I don't Just play games like that. I have a life, but I, I understand. Oh, oh, what you're oh. No, no. <laughs> you know, all it is is Call of Duty with swords. That's all. Uh, it's the only difference. Nope. And dragons and fireballs. Sure. Um, they came out last night, and uh, I was playing quite a bit of it uh, nice. up till about one in the morning. Wow! Yeah, well, it's massively multiplayer, I was right? Up watching playing basketball until one of them. That was a heck of a game. Did you watch the this game whole thing last has been night? Fantastic! What actually. a playoff! Well, I've watched every one of them. I, I yeah, yeah. This has been a great series. I have. I've really been enjoying it. They're so closely matched, except the Warriors are starting to look like they might be tiring. She's messed up because they're the they're so good, too. Yeah. and they're our team. You know what? It's hard to beat LeBron James. Forget the other forget the other guys. <laughs> hard to beat LeBron James. Uh, but I'm sorry, Mary Jo. Um, we, we, and it's everybody okay. else, we were talking sport ball there. Perhaps you noticed. I, I, I kind of followed it. <laughs> That's I am not a basketball fan, but of course I'm a once, Warriors fan. You know, once I, I know am you're talking Xbox, I, I know you are. Well, that's the thing. I'm trying to ease you into this Xbox Thank conversation. You. Thank you. <laughs> Next week, can you believe it, E3? I know, I know. yeah. Where did that come from? Well, a bunch of companies got together and thought they should. Have a <laughs> it's a rhetorical question, Paul. Thank you very much. It's a place where sick people go, but that's beside the point, Leo. <laughs> uh, Xbox and uh, Microsoft announced a terabyte Xbox. I, you know what's yeah. great though? The USB port. I bought a three terabyte drive. I have. I am downloading all sorts of stupid games I'll never play because they're free. I now have and honestly, on the Xbox the, One, which is not exactly like a portable system. Right, that's fine. Having an external hard drive, who no cares? No big deal. The, yeah, yeah. I and agree. I love it. Man, I am so happy. But it's not, I mean, I, this is kind of a natural progression. So they can offer this at the original $400 price point. That's it. What, it isn't that well. interesting? Does it come with a Kinect? Uh, no. It oh, so, they're dead. By the way. It's been one of the more interesting uh, about faces in modern Microsoft history where they've basically said publicly, it's, it just hasn't had the impact we thought it was going to have, you know. And uh, as, we, as we have discussed on this show, I still think the biggest deal about Connect is the voice control thing and that they I were dumb it. to build it into the Connect. Uh, they should have built it into the console. They or have it a, like yeah. a separate microphone, uh, potentially. Yeah, they could have. Uh, because that stuff is awesome, and everyone should have that. And it stinks you have to pay so much money to get a Connect right. to make it work. I'm pointing at my Connect, by the way. I can, I'm sure you can all tell that. Uh, I, can do this stuff. I, I uh, You can still buy a, a, an Xbox One with a Connect, though. Yep. Yeah. yep. I you recommend buy people the do that. Connect separately if you want to. In fact, buy that and then just buy external storage because you can get mm -hmm. three terabytes for nothing. Sure. And it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't impact performance or anything. It works great. Nope. Okay. I have still two terabytes left, and I'm. And the Xbox One handles is so much better than the uh, 360. I just expanded the storage of my 360, and it's really old fashioned how it works. It's funny how they still haven't. They 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 support more bigger hard drives, but they don't really elegantly support this notion of. Would you just always put it here, please? Right. <laughs> you know, I, I, or. Whatever. You know, I, I always want games here. It's transparent to me. I don't even know what it's doing. Right. It's it's wonderful on the Xbox. It's as if it extended the, the internal drive by three terabytes. There you go. And it's just exactly, you know, I don't have to think about it. Yep. And I want to make room because uh, Arkham Knight coming mm. soon. The new Batman. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I will be very tired that ne that day as well. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> It's I funny. know it's easy it's if you funny. just stay with Call of Duty and just play Call of Duty. That's fine. No, I, I, I get it. I can, I can extrapolate my ex, <laughs> uh, my Call of Duty experiences. I'm, to your I'm promiscuous. I play a game for a few days, then I move yeah. on. It's just the way I am. Um, but just, you, you're, you're very faithful. You're a monogamous gamer. Although a faithful, I don't know because I'll tell you, I have gone back to the previous Call of Duty game. Oh. And I'm not playing. One. I think that's okay. That's like marrying a sister or cousin. It's okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. I don't know. I, this you mean a, after the original. This is a tortured death, right? analogy that, that is not going to survive. Yes. 
<laughs> anyway, let's get to the news at hand, shall we? <laughs> I am going to be playing Harley Quinn. I'm just saying. Go ahead. No, so uh, one terabyte Xbox One, which is great. Yep. Um, there's an update to the controller that will ship in all new consoles going forward. Um, the update, what it includes is a headset jack. And so if you're familiar with the Xbox One, you know it has a proprietary uh, connector for the headset. Right. Obviously, those things still work, and there's certain advantages to that. But you can plug in a, a normal heads, like a off-the-street headset that has volume controls and mute and stuff like that, and it will all work. And so that's, I think that's beneficial. I don't know why they didn't have that from day one. Um, and th there's a actually there's a second controller. It's just a kind of a cool looking black and gray camouflage controller, special edition controller. Uh, I don't know when that. I don't know if that's this fall though. That might not be for sale right away. I have enough trouble then, finding my controller. I don't need a camouflaged controller. <laughs> I have an actually. I have a. This is all. You have a rack. I have my controller have rack. A, Ooh, I do that's have pretty. A camouflage. Actually, that would stand out better than the black. Ironically. <laughs> Unless you're That's playing in the jungle, the camouflage controller actually is easier to find. Yeah, like <laughs> sometimes if I don't want people to see me. I just stand really still. <laughs> um, but uh, in some ways, the big news here is for Windows because they announced and, and won't release until the fall a wireless adapter for Windows 10 only. It's basically a USB stick and you, you obviously you plug it into a USB port. And what it lets you do is use an Xbox One controller. Ah play games on Windows or to stream games ah. to Windows from your Xbox and Ooh. play them through, through Windows, right? Ah. Uh, but that's not coming out until the fall. Cool. I mean, and by the way, until it does, you can use a USB cable. It will work uh, wired as well. The X, you know, it's so funny because when the Xbox One came out, we, I was, and I don't know about you, but I was bemoaning the lack of signature games of uh, exclusives. Yep. Of, yep. There's, no, I mean, there is now... No problem. There are so many great games, and it's such a great You know platform. what the neat thing, uh, I, I, they must have done this in the past uh, when console versions changed, but we're starting to see, and you're seeing it on PS4 as well, these game collections appear where mm. people have moved forward to Xbox One or PS4 yeah, had like played Halo. all these yeah. previous games. Yeah. So Halo happened. Uh, Gears of War is going to happen. Um, I can't think of the name of it because I'm not really a PS4 guy, but the, there's a big Sony Uncharted, I think. Is going to be a ser every Uncharted game will be made into a collection for PS4 use. I think it's Uncharted. Uh, if it's not, it's something like Uncharted. Um, I like that kind of trend. No, they did an Uncharted. Like, uh, yeah, they did like one, two, three, and four or something. I love okay. Uncharted. Um, yeah. Not enough to buy a PS4, but I love Uncharted. Yeah, I ha yeah, I, I think about just playing those games just to try them. I have my PS3. I can play it there. But like the whole the Halo Master Chief collection was great. Yeah, I love that idea. Yeah, I do too. What game should we... Well, you have already all the Call of Duties, so there's no point. Well, actually, that's what I want. I want the Call of Duty collection to be the Call of Duty online games only. Ah. <coughs> and what I want is not the actual games. I want just the levels and the loadouts and all the... Right, so you can play any map. In one giant system. Yeah, that's actually great. That would be cool. I can't... I, I, that would be... With I the, would stop... Of course, I'd stop buying games. With the game. modern engine, but uh, but all the maps. That would be I would really cool. I'd love to see that happen. That's a great idea. There are maps I still miss. Yeah, that's a Call great of Duty idea. Two, which, by the way, dates back to 2005. Yeah. But imagine if they updated it and used the current engine. I know. Oh, I think so about fun. this a lot. Me Some too. people dream about vacations and <laughs> cars. Very Joe's I going. About, I dream about what the Call of Duty. What's wrong with these guys? No, she's just <laughs> thinking, I'm so glad I'm not a boy. I'm just thinking, <laughs> Hadoop. Hadoop. Oh. No, but I, I have a question for Paul. What do you what do you think we're going to see at E three now that they already announced this? I know, I, right? So, I think they're going to do what they did last year, which was focus just on games. And and when yeah. they originally announced this hardware stuff, I thought that was kind of weird. Um, why wouldn't they just announce this at the show? You know, it was a leak. And right? <laughs> I don't. Well, I, I mean, I it's funny because they, they're going to become available during the show. Yeah. Right. Oh, some of them are. I mean, the new console, the new controller. Um, I don't know. I, I bet it's because they're going to focus on games, and I bet that a bunch of it will be Windows games. I think so it's going to be about software. What about mm -hmm. Hololens? Ooh. Ooh. I I haven't heard that okay. they are going to do anything like say drop the SDK for the Hololens there, but it seems like sure. Hololens should be part of whatever they do i would think interesting it could be just a guess okay. but yeah. that could be yeah. 
Could be. Just throwing that out there. Could be. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I see what you did there. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, I'm not less, I'm not as excited as Hol as I was about Hololens because yeah. you guys talked me off. off oh really? Of it. Well, you know the the narrow field of view and all that. I got yeah. a Gear VR and I've actually been kind of more excited about VR than I was before. Um, I ordered a, a Google cardboard thing. Yeah. You want to get a cardboard. If you get a cardboard, well, it's too late. But if you get a cardboard, get one. And there's, they're like 25 bucks with a strap. So it just yeah. holds it on. <laughs> it's really a pain to hold it on all the time. Um, Here's the thing. I'm t it's going to be a real soul-searching moment if you get this $20 piece of cardboard thing that you could have made for yourself for right. $5. Right. And, if, I mean, if that thing, if that works, if it's really actually pretty good and you can throw an Android game in there or something and it looks good or whatever, I mean... <laughs> that's I, that's gonna <laughs> set my expectations accordingly. I mean, that's interesting. So I, I want to see. It. I want. I just want to see it. Yeah. Did you you ordered one? You said right. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have not. It would be it. funny if Microsoft actually maybe it came and I didn't notice. I got, like, you were allowed to order one. I don't wait a minute. What say? Yeah, that, uh, what happened? You were allowed to order one. Who? Oh. oh, you ordered a cardboard, not a Hololens. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Right. 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 Yeah. No, I got the uh, Gear VR because I have a Galaxy S6. And, yeah. um, well, I'll give you an example. There's a, a Cirque du Soleil video they made in 360, mm -hmm. and the performers are all around you. Yeah. And, and you look, and there's somebody doing something cool, and you look over here. And I got so excited. I was, I was in bed looking at it, uh, and I jumped out of bed, and I started, oh, my God. I mean, it's like you're there. Admittedly, yeah. low res, blah, blah, blah. Sure. But it's still good enough. You have to suspend a little bit, suspend uh, disbelief a little yeah, bit. But it's okay. wow, what an experience! You really get a sense of well, this is going to be interesting. You, you, um, you just told us that you played up, stayed up late last night playing games with swords and dragons. <laughs> I, I think suspending belief is, uh, you know, the first step. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's okay. Um, in any event, yes. Uh, I think we've uh, mined, the, plumbed the depths of this mine yes, yes. sufficiently to As have we do. harassed Mary Jo Foley. <laughs> uh, and uh, now we can move on because, the, my friends, the point of the show where I get overly excited, we call it the back of the book. <laughs> Are you talking to me? No, this thing. <laughs> you talking to me? I have this uh, Heil, right? Is oh, you have a limp arm. Sorry. I hate it when I, that Well, happens. I don't know. So actually the uh, the clamp that holds it to the desk yeah. is broken. Yeah, right? yeah. So it kind of, oh, yeah. it, it just kind of sits in, at an it's, angle. This is normal. So today, a new one is arriving. Good, good. And I'm going to securely, and hopefully it works. But I mean, for now, it's, I, maybe the arm's okay. I, what I'm guessing is the arm's okay. It's just that yeah. it's, it's not this at is the right always angle. these things, you know, they're kind of, they're like those Ledoux lamps. Remember the same problem, the springs were, and so yeah. Bob's done some stuff, which is nice. Like the springs are internal. They don't, they, these don't, I mean, well, the itself. they're good. They don't go bad as fast. But Although here's the trick. I drilled holes in my desk. Yeah. I don't do clamps because the clamps, because oh, wow. you, you torque it a lot, right? So all of my, my desk, this nice solid. They do, right. They do desk. have a version of the, you can actually, there's three holes in it. Yeah. You can, I, I, I had just, Colleen yeah, I, in, in the day. This yep. desk is full of holes. Oh. It has holes <laughs> everywhere. I haven't thought of Colleen forever. Yeah. She was great. Where is and she? Do you talk to her? She's at Facebook. Yeah, still. Well, uh, yeah, last I heard. Oh, so did she leave to go to Google? She went Facebook? to Google. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was a great success at Google. Rose rapidly got promoted. Every five, every five minutes, she got promoted there. Mary Jo, did you know Colleen? Oh, she was yeah. great. So she, she was, was our best. chief engineer. She designed yeah. a lot of the stuff. Awesome. That, oh, well. But this was back in the cottage days. It was like, it was like three of us. Right. Uh, and uh, she was, we, I love Colleen. I think perhaps I was a little hard on her. Because, uh, but she'd always said, you know, I mean, it's stressful. You know, we're, we're broadcasting live from lawn chairs in front of Irba Buena Center during the announcement of the first iPad. And, yeah. and what we were doing was amazing. She built these, I mean, it was incredible. And sometimes it didn't work. And I go, Bleh! but that's, you know, I mean, that's normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, I love her. I and love she's Colleen. great. She was person. amazing. Uh, she had always said, "If I and by the way, she was a sociology major when I hired her. Was looking for an internship, and uh, after we talked, I said, i 'I'm not going to give you an internship. I'm hiring you. You are brilliant.' <laughs> uh, she invented really all the streaming technologies we use today. She kind of figured it out and made it happen. 
got a job at Google. She'd always said, hey, okay, but if I get a job at Google, I'm leaving. I said, if you get a job at Google, you will leave with my blessing. She did. <laughs> well, I was very proud of her. She worked there for some years. Uh, mm -hmm. I think rose rapidly um, and ended up uh, leaving Google to go to a startup. I think she, as it often happens with Google, she wanted to work at a startup. And mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I think Facebook made her an offer. She made an offer she couldn't refuse. And so she's doing streaming video over there. Am I right, Paul, uh, John? Well, she's doing lots of things. She's doing lots of things. Um, nice. Our elemental yeah. is when she worked at Google. When she worked at Google, she's the one who said, the yeah. Model. So that's a great story. Which was, so she invented, we had like six Mac minis streaming. The, yeah, the, that's the, right, Streamosaurus, right. we call it. And so when she went to Google, she basically talked a company into building something, a single box that did that, called a $25,000 box called the Yellow Metal, which she said, now you need to get it. And so we, I bought it. And that's what we're used to stream. I mean, it's really, she's, she has changed streaming video. And I was very lucky to have her uh, around. And I don't remember. Oh, but yes, she was also handy. <laughs> yes. And she would climb on this desk and drill holes in it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you couldn't, I'm telling you, this mic, you could you could hang off of it. <laughs> and it wouldn't go anywhere, which is so what you I haven't need. thought of her in forever. I'm I know. Ashamed of myself. You know what? Next time we have you all out, A, we're not going to go to the Washoe House for mashed peas. And <laughs> really B, still burned by that for some reason. And B, and He's never going to live It was there. so bad, Mary Jo has to go there. It was the worst. I know. I'm curious about it now. <laughs> I have never had a worse meal in my life. But, 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 but Leo, at least, at least give us this. The salad was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I was so embarrassed because I had all our hosts out. It was so embarrassed because I wanted to give them a taste of old Petaluma. What I didn't realize is yep. the old Petaluma part old. was the peas. <laughs> But um, anyway, next time we'll have Colleen come. We'll, I'll talk. I'll strong arm her into coming in because I know a lot of you would like to see her again. She's just the greatest. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, sorry to. Uh, I started that. a Blue Apron ad here. Speaking sorry. of peas, Blue Apron. Oh man, Blue Apron is awesome. If uh, next time we'll just cook for you. That's what we'll do. We'll get a big Blue Apron box. I know you guys love Blue Apron. The idea of Blue Apron is uh, you don't have to be. A trained chef to make fabulous meals for your family and your loved ones and you don't i know when you get home from work you don't the last thing you want to do really is go shopping to pick up all the ingredients blue apron solves all this they ship um oh look at the i love this one short rib burgers on pretzel buns i've made that with happy cheddar sauce i'm sorry hoppy <laughs> cheddar sauce <laughs> and roasted tomato <laughs> potato rounds they, may, they send you everything you need in this refrigerated box. Never frozen, by the way. It's all fresh. The produce is locally sourced and very fresh and delicious. And you don't get too much. You don't get more than you need, so there's no waste. But if you need a clove of garlic, you got a garlic clove. If you need uh, parsley, you got that. And then inside there, there's a card with the recipe. And, you, and by the way, fascinating recipes that one would never think of. Chicken piccata with fresh linguine pasta and sugar snap peas and farro salad with pickled onion and kalamata olives. I mean, just incredible stuff. You set the schedule so they never, you know, the, the boxes come when the time is right. It's about $10 a meal. It's very affordable. And they have a family plan with uh, kid-friendly ingredients. Once you cook this, you're never going to get the same meal twice. But once you've cooked it, uh, you're going to know how to do it. And that's kind of neat, too. It really expands your repertoire. And, you know, somebody like uh, Mary Jo, who's already a great cook, even even Mary Jo, I think, you enjoyed the meals that you got. They were unique. They were different. Um, uh, just is incredible. Uh, I never knew what to do with a bok choy. And I now know what to do with a bok choy. And uh, those bok choys, by the way, came from uh, a farm just down the road, and they're fabulous. You can use their website and the how-to videos there, even if you're not a Blue Apron customer. So check it out, blueapron.com slash twit. And while you're there, you know what? We're, we're going to send you two meals free so you get a sense of it. Uh, it's so great. Get cooking with Blue Apron, blueapron.com slash twit. Um, we've been sending boxes to all our hosts. I know Paul and Mary Jo, last time we talked, you guys loved it. Um, we're, th we're, th we're thrilled to be associated with them. It's great stuff, blueapron.com. Slash twit, your first two meals are free. Back of the book time. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. Whoops, that's the wrong picture. That's the picture <laughs> I want. Uh, why don't you start, Paul, with your tip of the week? 
Yeah, I, I actually had hoped to have more of these by the time the show started, but it's actually been surpri uh, surprisingly busy this week. But I'm starting a series of articles on uh, people are upgrading to Windows 10 and they want it to work the way that they're used to. Because uh -huh. obviously, if you're coming at it from Windows 7, the start menu's there, but start menu doesn't look like the start menu in Windows 7 and, you know, floating windows there and so forth. But Explorer is a little bit different and so forth. So I've only put the first one up and it's about modifying a part of File Explorer so that it works more like it does actually in this case to the version of Windows 8, which I really like. Um, but I'm going to have a bunch of these. And so there'll be stuff for people. If you're coming from Windows 8 and you prefer everything to be full screen, you don't want the, the Windows and stuff, you can do that. And and so I, I just have the beginnings of that, unfortunately, not as much as I was hoping for. Um, and then the software pick of the week is tied to an update that Microsoft made to two, Office 2016 uh, for Windows, the preview version. Um, they started to add some of the live collaboration features that they've already had on the web for some time. Uh, and more specifically uh, to Word. And so in, in Word now, you can see where the other person is editing in the document live. I think the actual real-time uh, effect is going to be coming in a future update, but right now you can see where the cursor is and, and that someone else is working on it. Um, but I'm reminded that I've been using Office 2016 uh, Preview now for a while, and it's really stable. And as, as a software pick, the notion here is obviously it's a trial, um, it, but if you have uh, an Office 365 subscription, you can actually install it as part of your subscription. And so instead of installing the, the you know, current version, uh, 2013, you can ex install the preview version. It will count uh, you know, against one of your installs. But that means you'll keep getting updated as this thing goes forward and you'll be updated to the final shipping version when that happens. And of course, it'll be updated going forward in the future as well. And that's actually kind of nice. And I would say that just from a functionality standpoint or from a reliability standpoint, it's it's right there. It's great. And I honestly, for you know, Word, um, OneNote, which are the big ones I use, there isn't like a huge difference. I think visually it's kind of nice. So looking, it's got that kind of contrasty colored top bar like you see in the mobile apps. But functionality-wise, um, not a major, major difference. Um, but if you're not paying for Office 365, let me see if I can get this to come up on my system because I think this one is an example of that. I occasionally get these little reminders that, um, yeah, it's not coming up, but uh, that this thing is going to expire. But it expires in like 271 days or some, some crazy amount of time. So if you don't want to pay for Office, this is actually a nice way to get a long-term version of Office for free. Just use it for the next whatever it is, uh, six months or a year or however long it lasts. Um, and it's free, so you can get that uh, from the Microsoft. Website. I got a tip. Can I do a tip? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's Alex Gumpel's tip. So uh, okay. he got his Cortana. <laughs> he's got updated on uh, Windows Phone. Have you seen this? If you uh, tap Cortana, if you've got a trip upcoming, and Alex has always got a trip upcoming, it'll give yep. you spontaneously information about the trip. So there's the flight. There's the map sure of the it. SFO. Is that not new? Check-in available yeah, so we can I mean, do that. I've seen that before. Moderate yeah. traffic on your way to SFO. Here's the weather in Austin. You're going to Austin, I guess. It's almost like it's proactive. It's almost as if it knows. Somehow, <laughs> yeah. how do it know? So that's that's really cool. I have seen that before. I'm not sure. To open my trip plan there? Yeah. It, it, it just yeah. was announced like two days ago. This was announced two days ago, he says. I was. Well, yeah, so I could check kind of in. I'm pretty sure it. I've seen this before, though. All I right. thought I had, too, but it might be like the Snap window. Look at this. Food YouTube. and drink in Austin. Catch awesome events. Great sites. Right. So how does it know about your trip? Is that from email or from the email? So. That, that it's done before with just the flight. And stuff. It's done the flight before, but this is giving you a lot more, yeah. like explore oh, San okay. Francisco Airport. Uh, yeah. Here's the weather in Austin. Popular food and drink. So this is actually, I think this is pretty cool. It's pretty impressive. It reminds me a little bit of TripIt, which I use, but it's even more extensive. So that's, and that's nice. That's what Cortana well, should it's, be. It's, Thank it's you, like Alex. Google Now, kind of, right? I mean. Yeah. Yeah, except Google Now is not that, I can tell you right now, is not that complete. That's really, Siri that's nice. Yeah. But Siri's going to do it, so there you go. <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, you have a software pick, Mr. Thrunt? Sorry to interrupt. I, well, I, I'm done. It was Office 2016. Oh, you mentioned it already. Okay. I kind of ran through it. You ripped through it. That means that's more time for Mary Jo's Hadoop. That's right. Guys, Great. we haven't said Hadoop lately Hadoop. much on the show. Horton, so here's a Hadoop. Everyone drink. <laughs> Everyone drink. <laughs> um, this week, Hortonworks announced version 2.3 of the Hortonworks data platform. And if you remember, Microsoft is working kind of hand-in-hand with Hortonworks um, to bring Apache Hadoop 
to Windows Server and to Azure. So Some of the words that you say are version. incredible to me. Sorry. Hortonworks, <laughs> Hadoop. Hortonworks. It's, it's like, like we're reading a like it's like a um, Dr. like a Doctor Seuss. Seuss book. Yeah. <laughs> it's based Hortonworks, on that actually. Yeah. 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 It is. Yeah. It is. You, have you ever seen Sorry. the little elephant? Mm-hmm. Come on. Go with it's me. From Horton, here's a who. <laughs> So uh, version 2.3, there's a lot of new features in, in this Hortonworks data platform 2.3 that came out this week. Um, but in short, what, what it's really good for is it's supposed to eliminate some of the complexity of administering Hadoop, which people who work with Hadoop know would be very welcome. So I wanted to just let people know when this is coming to Windows Server and Azure. Uh, version 2.3 of Hadoop, uh, sorry, of the Hortonworks data platform is already available on Windows Server because... Hortonworks works with Microsoft on this, and they always ship Windows and Linux versions of this platform at the same time. Uh, but coming this summer, you'll also have Linux for HD Insight supporting the 2.3 version, as well as um, Windows, uh, the Windows implementation. Uh, in VMs, you'll have H HDP 2.3. Man, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> HDP 2.3. Uh, and you'll have it available as part of um, Windows uh, version of HD Insight as well. So lots of Hadoop coming um, this summer for, uh, based on this new 2.3 version of the Hortonworks data platform. Nice. That's your enterprise pick. Yes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, our code name of the week. Right. So the other thing I didn't ask, Paul, because I wanted to save it for the code name pick mm. of the week is... Mm. Next week at E3, I, I also wonder if we might hear about Microsoft's Arcadia technology. Arcadia was the code name for the streaming app and game service that the Windows team is building. Ah. It, um, seems like it might be time for Microsoft to show that off hmm. um, since it seems to be somehow connected with work they're doing around Windows 10. Um might be this might be the show where they show that off or talk more about that because I, I think they are going to talk a bit about updates coming to Xbox One during E3. So I'm actually going to watch the streaming keynote on Monday just wow. in case they announce this. Otherwise, I'll sleep through the we'll game. We'll get you part, yet, Mary Jo. I will just or sleep as, through the as game. As we say in these parts, oh, you'll get it. <laughs> yeah, Paul, Paul keeps threatening to ship an Xbox One. I'm just going to give you an Xbox. Just you see. Just. He just can't let this go. You can use but. it as like a coffee table. It'd just be like a warm, I, slightly I, loud coffee table. No, I'd rather have a Surface Hub than an Xbox One. <laughs> How about an Xbox connected to a Surface Hub? Okay, that would be pretty cool. But then I need a whole much bigger apartment. So yeah, Arcadia is something I'm going to be watching for. I don't, you know, I don't have any information that Microsoft's going to show this or talk about this at the show, but um, I'm thinking that could be a venue for that as well. So that's my okay. code name pick. Do you know? Um, I mean, what's the what's the point of this? Is it to get Xbox 360 games onto the Xbox One? Is it to get Xbox games in general onto Windows? Or what's the? There were, there were a lot of kind of guesses what this would be for, right? Is it is it the way you connect your Xbox One uh, platform to Windows 10 and stream games across the two platforms? Yeah. Is that the technology that's enabling that? I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. It is mm. something, though, that mm. is a... Pro mm. Arcadia, we <laughs> do know, was a project of Microsoft's operating systems group. So it's the team that builds Windows. It's their project. Um, so, yeah. Mm. We don't really know what they're going to use that for. We're, we're just kind of guessing at that point. Well, I, I mean, I guess that arguably... Stay, the, um, the HoloLens uh, thought that you had in this... Uh, both fall into the general category of yeah. games, right? It's about games, yeah, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. And and kind of like the whole idea of one Windows, right? They haven't yet brought Windows 10, the operating system, to the Xbox One. That's supposed to come later at some point. But before they do that, they still could tie Windows 10 to Xbox, right? In different ways, through streaming, through uh, the common store. They could do a lot of things like that. And yeah, now. We'll see. Just in the nick of time. It's beer time. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was thinking about um, beers that I don't often talk about, and I don't talk enough about brown ales. <laughs> <laughs> Some might argue. By the way, uh, you're picking one of my favorite 
breweries. Breweries. Oh. Uh-huh. And mine also. These guys are near me. Yep. Pretty Things. They're based in the Boston area. They're uh, they're actually gypsy brewers, which means they um, don't have their own brewery, as far as I know. What? That's true. Uh, they, they just go, come and t- take a barrel out of your house? What do they, no, they, they sneak in at night? <laughs> <laughs> they do. They sneak into breweries at night and they brew there. What? Because they don't have the space. No, they don't sneak in. They Some get guy. they get breweries to, to let them a guest brew brewer. at their facility. Yeah, guest yeah, yes, yeah. brewer. Um, and they it's, make some it's amazing beer. Who does this? They're, they're amazing. It is. It's a husband and wife team that that runs Pretty Things. And uh-huh. this beer, um, Saint Patolph's Town, which I think is named for Boston, isn't that connect? Saint mm-hmm. Patolph wasn't that about Boston somehow? Paul, yes, I'm our sorry. historian. Yes. He's gone off to get a drink. <laughs> Same yes. He's going to get his brown ale right now. I need uh, some Saint yeah. Butolph. I, went, I haven't put this on my laptop yet, but I, I went off to get my. I have a Pretty Things. Laptop oh, sticker. Yeah, sticker. Nice. Nice. I want one of them. Yeah. yeah. This is a this, so their brown ale is a really nice light brown ale. I've had a couple times. It's it's not like you it's not one of those brown ales you smell and you think, oh, I want to only drink that in the fall or the winter. You could drink this even in the summer. It's it's lighter in color, it's lighter in flavor. It tastes has like the coffee and burnt good good in a good way, burnt notes that many brown ales have. And some people think it tastes almost chocolatey. Um, but it's it's a very nice, easy to drink brown if you are in the mood to try something new. Saint that's not an IPA, Saint not a heavy. Butolf. <laughs> Is that how you say it? Or Saint, Batolf? I, I don't, don't think it's Batolf. I think it's, it's Butolf. Uh, or <laughs> sometimes Botwolf of Thorny. He was an English abbot and saint, the patron saint of travelers and the various <laughs> aspects of farming. And his feast day is coming up in one week. So get some Butolfs and celebrate. <laughs> I have uh, Pretty Things beer in my fridge right now. Nice. Wasn't there was a really group nice called The Pretty Things. I wonder if they were named after that group. They make a barley wine beer, which is very, very mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's an it's a Anglo-Saxon kind of a, sounds like kind of a brew. Jack, mm-hmm. Jack Door Brewers. is the one. That Jack Door is great. Say, that's that's, that's a great big. beer. Yep. Many English churches are dedicated to St. Butthoff. And when I lived in Boston, right out of college, the street I lived on was St. Yes. I used to call it St. Batolf, yes. but St. Batolf. Well, if, if you live there, you get to, you get to choose the name. Boston, I just called it what Boston, I <laughs> the name Boston <laughs> comes from Batolf. It was originally Batolfston. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Uh, and I think people decided quite rightly that that was just too damn hard to say, especially right. if you had a, a St. Batolf's or two. And so they just call it, instead of Batolfston, <laughs> they call it Boston. Actually, they call it Boston. Boston. Maybe Boston. Saint Badolf. <laughs> uh, there's a, a street in Boston's Back Bay neighborhood, which Mary Jo Foley used to live on. The President's House at Boston College. <laughs> there's also a Saint Badolf Street in London. And uh, oh, yeah, okay, of course. <laughs> there's, there's. I know you all know the famous private club, the Saint Badolf Club, in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> been there many a time. Many of it. I did not know that Boston was originally Butoff's town. Like, no. Or Butoffston. Now you know. Butoffston. You think it's Butoffston? Butoffston. Yeah. See all the things you can learn through beer. It's just beer. educational it's like a, as well it's like as edu- Yeah, it's like traveling in without leaving your stool. It like puts information in your head and then it kills the brain cells that contain <laughs> yes. it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Circle of life. Does anybody in the chat room know how you pronounce... B o t o l p h. The funny thing is, you probably pronounce it Boston, which is why. <laughs> yeah. Why that happened? You know? It's probably pronounced Boston. Yeah, it's pronounced Boston. Boston, Boston, Boston. Ladies and gentlemen, we have had a lovely time getting together and talking about Windows for the last couple of hours. I'm glad you were here, and I'm glad, especially. That Paul Thorat and Mary Joe Foley were here. Paul Thorat is at Thorat.com, T H U R R O T T. The T is silent, which would make it a row. <laughs> a row. Uh, he is also the author of not, many not of all book. the T's are silent. Not some of the T's. <laughs> Stewie, wait a minute. Stewie went to St. Batolph's school in, in England. He should know. Stewie in our chat room, how do you pronounce B O T O? L P H. Stewie, you are going to be the definitive. The off is silent. <laughs> the off. I don't think that's right. 
Uh, Mary Jo Foley's at allaboutmicrosoft.com, the ZDNet blog where she covers everything Microsoft. And each and every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, that would be uh, 2 uh, p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC. We gather and talk, and you would love it if you'd watch live, live.twit.tv. By the way, we're going to readdress that live.twit.tv. We'll soon just go to twit.tv slash live. Uh, but you won't have to change. You can still use your bookmarks. We'll figure out a way to... I think there's a technique on the web When's that lets you... When's the new site going live, Leo? <sighs> well, it was down about a minute ago, so I... <laughs> can I see the site? Is yeah, <laughs> new.twit.tv if you want to look at it. But it's to, it's a work in progress. Um, but it's going to be up... Uh, we were hoping tomorrow... or day, Yeah, tomorrow. But uh, then Acquia, who hosts the uh, Drupal side of it, because there's, there's, it's, it's, it's divided among many different servers, Acquia uh, kind of did something weird to our load balancer. And uh, that's why you may be getting odd things going on. Huh. Uh, but there it is. And you're there, and you're there, and you, and you, and you. Uh, and that's where you'll be able to watch the show live or get it on demand at twit.tv slash WW. Or you can also subscribe. I would recommend that. That way you'll get every episode. Your favorite podcatcher will probably have it. It is, by the way, Stewie says, I'm saying it right. Uh -huh. Butt off. Butt off. <laughs> you want to hear some people saying it? Here's a guy from England. Sint Buttolfs. Sint Buttolfs. By the way, notice that's real because he says Sint. Here's Molly. She's from Ireland. Saint Buttolfs. I think the <laughs> Saint Buttolfs. <laughs> hi, Lily. Hi, Lily. Hello. It's like an audio version of getting smacked on your wrist with a yardstick. <laughs> <laughs> Come over here, Paul. I need to tell you something. St. Bottoms. <laughs> there you go. Saint if you're being talked to in that tone, something has gone wrong. St. Bottoms. Uh, <laughs> Perhaps you could tell the courts what you were doing again. St. Bottoms. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. <laughs> I just can't stop. Uh, we will see you guys next week, right? Yes. Right. Thank you for being here. Right. Can I just give you love and kisses and hugs from uh, <laughs> all of us in Petaluma to all of you across, Saint across the <laughs> in St. <Saint> Potofston. <laughs> <laughs> see, see you later. <laughs> thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. And thanks to everybody in the St. Potofs. Yes, thank you. <laughs> 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 bye bye. <laughs>